say to you, Mr. Fritz, is that, that those changes and going to public hearing, the best time to do that is, is at that public hearing, which is on the 22nd. Now, there are some issues that was agreed to by the board about not changing my land, and it has been changed, and it needs to be addressed, because I've got a current map showing the changes that are being made, and it's not what everybody agreed upon. Well, it sounds like that's something the board has to hear. I can't make a decision for the board, but certainly. Yeah. I'll be happy to talk to you about it, but the board, only the board can make such decisions. Now, it was agreed upon by the board that my location, the line for 
the new changes proposed was going to start on the northern side of my line, not the southern side. And my land now has been moved into a, a different zone than what was agreed upon. So I don't know where we go from here, but somehow we need to get it resolved. Okay, well, um, certainly you'd be welcome to come and talk to me about it, but the best time to deal with that would be with the board, because they, they can't deal with it tonight because it's not an agenda. I, I understand that, and, uh, and I'm uh, just bringing it up now because there was a couple of things that was agreed upon that is now not currently being done, and somehow it needs to be resolved. Okay, well, why don't you and I meet next week, and uh, we can bring it, bring it, certainly bring it to the board's attention at, on, on the meeting on the 27th. Okay. Okay. May May I do? Sir? Yeah, if, if you can, when you guys have your discussion, have, if you know what night it was that the board said they approved something or voted on something, so that we can review those minutes, yes. have, have that available for Ted? I'm not sure that I have the exact night. I, I usually take people at face value when they're going to say they're going to do something. Well, I didn't run home and make a note of it, because, but it's got to be in the records. And I'm sure some of the board members will remember what was discussed. And I have no problem with meeting with the board and TAV, because it was board members that were still on the board that at that time said okay. And uh, the way it's going right now, it's just not what was agreed upon. I don't have can you give me an idea, so we can go back through the minutes, what, that, that was this year or was that in 2013? No, no, it was, when they first decided to change the zoning, I, I guess I was moved into CCS. Nobody told me of that, that I had been changed when it was agreed upon that I was going to stay in B1 or BI. And also I brought up the fact that I had, had a junkyard, had license even though I couldn't have junk cars because of my tire recycling business. And it was agreed upon that I could still continue doing that. And with the changes that are being made, none of that is going to happen. So those are two items that were agreed upon at that time, at the meetings, that is now currently being changed. Okay, well, <coughs> so you think it might be to last year? 2007. 2007 was one of them. And the other one was just last year, I believe. Well, we can look at 2013, 2007. I, obviously, I can't. Well, I address that at all. People still on the board. They will remember, I'm sure, agreeing to this. Um, so, I, yeah, I'm, I'm very concerned with that. Yes, I do remember Mr. Fitch was talking about the junk cap stuff. I do remember that discussion on the board. I think I was on the board at the time that discussion. Yes, it was. You were there. There yeah. was a discussion yeah. on the junk yards and him. And so, <coughs> I don't know exactly when, but I do remember that discussion. And also the reason he had to have the junkyard permit, or the only reason is because it wasn't scrap metal or anything else, he had rims. Right. And that's part of a, a vehicle, and that was the only reason why he needed the license. It was, at the time it was a laughing stock of the state that I had a junkyard license, but I couldn't have junk cars. But because tires were on rims, they considered it part of a car, so they made me get a junkyard license in order to be able to run my tire recycling business. Basically what I want is I want my land left in the B1 zone and not where it's headed right now, a BI. That was agreed upon and it's not true. I got right across the street from me is the Santa Mons. They're not included in this new zoning and I am. Doesn't make much sense. That my land all of a sudden is moved into a different zone. You're the last property in in that zone. You're yeah, well, that's the way it is now. Okay. And it should have been left like where it was. When I when I first moved into Arundel, yeah, the HC2, well, there was no zone to begin with when I came in first. Then they went to the HC, and I was in the HC. The reason that I built my house where I did was because it was in residential. The reason my stepson built his house where he did was because it was in residential. And now it's been that house, the houses have been moved into B1, BI. And my property is now going to be in a B2 and B1. I got two different two different zones now, according to the map, the B1 and 
BD1 and BD2 splitting my land up, and it's just a mess. And it's not what was agreed upon at the meetings. Uh, we'll take a look at that and we'll meet next week. Okay. okay. That was good. Thank you. Um, Can I we'll have to move the public hearing on the case for the Yeah. So you might as well start with eight. Okay, let's um anyone here from the public to discuss um, AIM recycling? No? I'll close the public hearing on that. Um we'll Skip to pending applications. Uh, AIM recycling. USA conditional use application. Proposed application to renew expired permit to continue operation of existing 43,000 square foot solid waste recycling facility on 22.9 acre site located at 224, 2244 Poland Road. Tax map 12, lot 9 in the BI district. AIM recycling USA is the owner. Applicant and Jared Jacobs is the applicant's agent. Uh, all requirements have been met. The FOF was written last time as is attached under separate cover. Jared, you got my, um, you got my uh, email today, right? Okay. What does the board want to do about the, uh, um, you know, the uh, closure bond? What? About the what? The closure bond. Well, uh, I'm surprised that we hadn't required it in the past. We haven't required it in anybody. Um, the, the intent of this is in case they, they go um, belly up, up belly up, and there'll be some. It's like with the telecommunications tower, where the tower, you have a bond that in case the in case the facility fails and um, the material is left there. It provides an escrow amount for the uh, for the cleanup of that facility. So you know, it would be the town's problem, it would probably be a state problem, actually. So if we didn't have the bond, something does go wrong, the town taxpayers would have to foot the bill. No, not necessarily. No. I, I, I don't think they would foot the bill. It would be it would be a persistent problem if you have a bond. There's a legitimate reason to. I mean, the, the town could use that money to hire somebody to. Well, if there was a bond, but if there was if there was no bond, then it would be an enforcement action, or it would be something that would be taken over by DEP Solid Waste. Yeah, and DEP accepted accepted the financial assurance AIM segment right. for their solid for their state permit. Right. So okay. So there, there's a, a layer of protection to the town. Well, the, the, well, there's no refund. If, if, if AIM were to, the whole reason you have it on the ordinance is that AIM, if any facility um, uh, were to fail, mm -hmm. that there would be some money there to deal with immediate cleanup funds. That's all. The issue is, and we, we discussed it very, 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 very uh, early on, and decided that wasn't really important. But it's just a decision the board's got to make. It's not something I put in. And, Several board members have mentioned this to me, so I wanted to. I don't remember even. We discussed that. Yeah. I'm just wasting my opinion. I don't remember. Because we were trying, I'm trying to get all the other stuff in in line current. Right. And I don't remember ever that being discussed. Mm -hmm. Maybe somebody else can refresh my memory. I don't, like I said, I don't remember. I'm not sure I remember the, the whole cost, but I would like to hear from Aim. Um, you mentioned um, the state being um, satisfied with the performance guarantees that you've given to the state. Yeah. So I'd like to expand on that a little bit because the board does have some latitude should we feel that and, and we have substantiated information that all, all is basically well. Yeah, what, what the state asks for is 
fi financial ability submissions too. So what we submitted to the state was, were cost reports and revenue reports from the last two years just to show the financial shape of the yard. And that's what we did for all five of their sites in Maine. And so the state accepted that as, as sufficient proof of financial ability to operate the facility and to put up the closure costs if, if the facilities were to close. And I actually, I brought copies of those tonight if you board members would like to see that. And you listen to bond. What is closure cost? Well, I don't know, maintenance of the property. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's not maintenance. It's, it's no different than what the gravel pit. Yeah, in 2007, the state estimated at less than $200,000. So that, I mean, that's, that's what, that's what's stated in the license that was granted to one steel or in Smorgan back in 2007. Mm -hmm. And so when we applied to transfer the license, the state didn't require anything above just the, the revenue reports. Is that per site or is that all of them? Well, what we, we submitted revenue reports for each site, so for individually. But the state also looked at the five as a whole five. as well. And the parent company is also on the hook. And a American and I and American Iron and Metal Company Inc. is an international recycling company. So they, they've also offered to submit a letter assuring the town that they will step in and pay closure costs if something were to happen. So we we also would be willing to submit that that guarantee from the parent company. Right. I think that that something that, that the minimum we should should expect or require just to have that letter. Um, what my concern is is that taxpayers don't get stuck putting their bill through a spill or something. They go bankrupt and all of a sudden you know, they clean up. So it sounds like the uh, DEP has has already gone through some type of assurance process, bonding process. It, in what what makes me feel a little uncomfortable is we, we require a gravel pit to, to post a bond. And, mm -hmm. and that is probably a, a, a much smaller impact if something went wrong, uh, if, if it was left vacant, than something that could occur there because there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of materials coming in and out of there. So I just want to make sure there's no liability to the town. Yeah. Under, under uh, 810 G3, we're supposed to ask for some sort of, uh, yeah. some, yeah. Sort of some sort of assurance. Yeah, sure. so, but you, there was that letter of assurance. That, is that, was that qualified? What was that? Um, 810 G3. 810 G4 says that the requirements of section 810 G3 may be waived if the board makes written findings that alternative performance guarantees, which the applicant just talked about, proposed by the applicant are adequate and appropriate to fill, fulfill the purpose of this ordinance. And from my view, the purpose of the ordinance is to make sure that if the facility does close, that the material, and 810G3 does say that it goes to the ongoing maintenance of the property. So that we can continue with the maintenance, upkeep, security, safety, and you guys even bring in radioactive stuff in there. So I I would be comfortable with the letter okay. saying that corporate would step in and pay the corporate one one person. I think that would or eight ten to four that would meet the purposes of eight ten to three. Question for you that uh, when they said they submitted it for each site, but we don't know what they submitted for quote unquote for this site. Yeah, he offered he offered to yeah. give you all of the financials for last yeah, year. Yeah, I, 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 I can. Wait, so we have financial. not necessarily the board itself. Yeah. So we have it for record for for the files and everything else. This is yeah. what I'm going. To, I'm not trying to say. Right. You know. That was submitted to the town as well because when we submit our application to DEP, we have to file a copy of that application with the town. So those materials were submitted to the town, just not not as part of publicized. 
They weren't publicized. That's what I'm getting at. I mean, they're they're for the record. That, but you know what I'm going at. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I guess they're not part of the planning board record, but they are. They are part of the planning board record. It's they just, yeah, they're just not disseminated to every member. Okay. Okay. They, you, sent, you sent it to me. Yeah, and I do it to the board. As part of and it. I say, yeah, they, yeah, they're in compliance with their with their DEP. Yeah. If you guys want to get copies of them, no, no, I'm just saying. The DEP orders will be happy to. No, no, no. So we don't need any more paper. paper. No, I, my printer's gone wacky enough. Okay. Um, do you want to make that a formal motion, Bob? Oh, we'll we'll put it on, on the... Uh, I guess she'll make it that, yeah, that... Well, we'll have to have a vote put it on as one of the conditions of approval. The board will have to vote on that later in total. When we go down through the individual I items, I have to have... Okay. I have to have one in two. Okay. okay. You know, when, when that comes up, I'll, I'll second that. <clears throat> so does that mean we need to deem this uh, complete? Or is it really uh, you've already done that. You've done your public yeah. hearing. You deem the application complete. Mm -hmm. Review the application. You turn the sidewalk. And um, the other thing. We would have done this last time had we had a quorum, which we did not have. Okay. So um, all all the requirements have been met, um, and you have a findings of facts in front of you right now, which okay. will come okay. in the last portion. Okay. Are you ready in the last portion? Um, what you just talked about. Okay, so I can start. Let me, let me go through the findings of facts. Findings of facts and motion for approval. Conditional use permit for American Iron. And metal LP solid waste facility 2244 Portland Road. Whereas on December 12, 2013, the Rental Planning Board received a conditional use application from One Steel Recycling to reinstate an expired conditional use permit, continued operation of the existing 43,000 plus square foot solid waste recycling facility on a 22.9 acre site located at 2244 Portland Road, tax map 12, lot 9, in the BI district. On December 12th, the company was sold to American Iron and Metal LP, and the application was continued under the new corporate name. Whereas on the Arundel Planning Board conducted an advertised public sidewalk on the premises and came to the conclusion that given the length of the permit expiration and the potential for changes on the site, the applicant was instructed to submit a new conditional use application for the solid waste facility. Whereas on April 10, 2014, the Arundel Planning Board reviewed the new submissions and application to determine them to be complete. I don't need an extra B in there. So yeah. Spell that up. Whereas on April 24, 2014, the Arundel Planning Board conducted a public hearing on a proposed project. Whereas the Arundel Planning Board has arrived at the following findings of facts. Quick, um, before you move into that, there are a couple of things uh, on the second paragraph, uh, whereas on the, I think we need a date. We need a date, yeah. Yeah, the date, uh, I'm not sure what the date would be. Well, we can look it up, it's in the okay. records. And also in the first paragraph, at the end of the second line, it, to reinstate an expired conditional use permit, it should add the word to, to continue operation. That's all. Uh, we just had the public hearing tonight. Yes, we did. That's so why the date. That, the, the date. No, we, there was a, an initial one. In Correct, but that wasn't. It wasn't held. Was that's was right. And that's what I just corrected on that too. As, as I said, I wrote this the last time, and haven't really made any changes. Correct the date. So we just we just changed the date to May. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, findings of fact. The application, the applicant and owner of the property is American Iron and Metal LP. Two, the property is located at 2244 Fulton Road, tax map 12, lot 9 in the BI district. Sorry. Uh, the property has been used for the past 15 years as, as a solid waste recycling facility specializing in the collection, reduc reduction, and exporting of recycled metals. As depicted on a proposed improvement map prepared by civil consultants and dated March 19, 2014, the applicant pr pr proposes to re-permit the recycling facility to process the same types of metal materials that the facility has historically processed. In addition, the applicant proposes to install a 10 by 20 scale house, 
a second vehicle weighing station, a RADCOM detection unit, install 10 parking spaces, reduce the driveway entrance to 42 feet in width, and install a 29-foot landscape aisle between Route 1 and the parking area. 5. All other recycling areas and collection points are to re remain as shown on the existing conditions map prepared by civil consultants dated January 1st through January 1. Okay, it should be January 31st or January 1st. You get both of them in there. Fast fingers. 31st. So yeah. January 31st? Yes, it was 31st. Okay, January 31st, 2014. The drive six, the driveway entrance maintains a site distance. In okay, in excess of six hundred feet to the north and to the south along Road One in conformance with the minimum distances for a fifty mile an hour road as specified in section 7.7a of land use ordinance. Seven, the applicant has both current and active solid waste permit and stormwater permit from the main department of environmental protection. All peak runoff will be detained on the site and all runoff is collected in stormwater treatment ponds. Eight, water services provided by Kenny Bum, Kenny Bum Paul Waters Water District from Route 1 mains and on-site septic is provided by an on-site septic system. Nine, no new site lighting is proposed. Ten, the planning board has determined that existing vegetation with, with limits of cutting as depicted on the existing conditions the plan set will be sufficient to meet all landscaping and parking lot buffering standards of the BI district to the side and to the rear of the properties, uh, boundaries. The applicant has submitted the construction detail sheet for all site work. Performance for condition use criteria. After due review and consideration, your Honor Planning Board has determined the application to be in conformance with criteria of Section 9.7H of the Arundel Land Use Ordinance as follows. 9.7H.1 That the use is compatible with and similar to the general categories of use of neighboring properties. The use and the size of the structures, strictures are similar in scale and scope to surrounding properties and other land uses in the BI district. Uh, move that we include that word, uh, the word should be structure. Right. Good. Second. All in favor? Yeah. All opposed. 9.7.82. The use is consistent with the comprehensive plan and, then, and the anticipated future development of the neighborhood in that the, content, the comprehensive plan permits such use for the BI district as conditional uses and therefore propose use is in performance with the 2005 Comprehensive Plan. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Yeah. So move. 9.7H3. That there is adequate and safe pedestrian and vehicular access to and into the site to accommodate anticipated traffic to and from the use. The proposed use will not generate significant trip generation. The applicant's driveway site distance exceed the minimum standards of section 7.7a and the applicant has received an MDOT driveway opening permit for the proposed activity. I move to approve that. Second. All in favor? I'd like to have just a little discussion on that one. Yep. Is it that uh, the, the site isn't generating significant trip generation or the proposed changes won't increase trip generation? Those changes will not increase existing trip generations. <coughs> but I know what it says. So. I'm sorry? But I know what it says. Yeah, it says no. It, but the way it is, it, it, that's probably true as well. The, the, right, so the, the proposed, proposed use. use. Yeah, but I'm comfortable with the way it's stated. Okay. If, unless you see something on the screen, there's three. Okay. Uh, I need a vote on that. I'd like to change this the way Bob said it. It's more clarity. Okay. So that would be that the, the, the proposed changes will not generate an increase in trip generation. Okay. Instead of proposed use, it should be proposed change. Okay. Get that you know, generate an increase. Can you repeat that for me? Yeah, the, the proposed change is will not generate 
an increase in trip generations? Well, be, should we include significant? Because do we know that it won't increase? Do we have a report on that? Well, you didn't ask for, we didn't ask for a uh, traffic uh, impact study to see whether or not the, the additional waste station would generate um, any additional trip generation. Right? I can't see how it would. <coughs> it it actually station. won't, because if have anything else, that will expedite instead of turning it and it will uh, make, make it less possible of uh, hanging out on the roadside, because it turns out the fact is it's being expedited. It's more of a safety issue. For That's use speed. and speed. So okay. maybe we should leave it the use and not the change. Yeah, the, the end use. So, well, either way, I'd go either way. I like it the way Bob had it. Okay. Does everybody agree with that? Yeah. Okay, we got a motion and a second. All in favor of the change? Okay. 9.7, 8.4. There is adequate water supply and sewage disposal available to service to use. Existing on-site septic will be provided on site and water is provided to the site by Kenny Buck 4, Wells Water District. The proposed use will not increase the demands for water or specific flow, septic flow on the property. I'll move to approve. Second. Discussion. Uh, yes. The discussion, the only thing is, I think for now and for the future, Jared, it should be noted the distance of, of fire fire hydrants or something or other mm -hmm. for clarity. We can put that on the applications from now on mm -hmm. because I know that's a, a major concern of yours and of the fire chiefs, mm -hmm. and I think that's mm -hmm. something that would be very appropriate to be on the actually the application form. I'm a business owner, that's why. So for the purposes of this, it's going to remain the same? Yeah. Well, it's the nearest hydrant is over at Enterprise Drive. Correct. It's that's only the same way. side, so we don't have to worry about crossing the crossing new one with... Correct me if I'm wrong, it's not on Enterprise <coughs> Drive. It's Excuse across the street. It's, really? There is nothing on Enterprise Drive. No, you're right. Thank you. No, it's across the street from Enterprise Drive. It is approximately 300 to 500 feet. Probably a total of 800 feet into the facility. I mean, within the thousand feet. That's what I'm going at. But I mean, uh, for clarity, that's what I mean. Right. We will have to shut down. That. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. We will have to shut down Route One, but that's part of fight. Okay. All set. Hold on there. We didn't go on that. Is, is there a motion? There yeah. was a motion. Yeah. Second. Right. Motion. Motion. For okay, discussion. Motion. 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 all in favor? Yes. All opposed, none. Okay, 9.7.8.5. That there will be no noise, dust, odor, vibration, or smoke generated by the use that will adversely affect neighboring properties. In that noise, the nature of the business does generate noise from crushing and unloading of materials. Must be farm materials. No, just of, of, materials. of materials, okay, of materials. However, the board finds that the use is and proposed sound levels are not unreasonable for the use of the district. Order, this use will not generate any order issues. Vibration and smoke, no vibration or smoke issues are generated on site. Glare, you stuck here, you got the applicant. Nothing after. Proposing to add in any additional lighting fixture, uh, um, any lighting uh, resources on the site with this application. The applicant is not proposing any additional lighting for this. Yep. Any additional lighting for this. Any additional lighting for this site. Okay. Have a vote on that. I'll, I'll move to accept that. Uh, 
I'll second, but I do want to open up for the discussion. Yeah. Well, since when is Blair been ever an issue? <clears throat> Um, glare can be a, a serious issue whenever uh, uh, the lighting is not properly shielded or the lighting uh, is uh, the light source is actually pointed towards drivers or towards adjacent property owners or towards adjacent residents. Glare can be a serious problem. It is one of the things that we're supposed to, to review as part of the conditional use application. There's some situations in which we've taken it very seriously and that one of them you may remember was the Cape Arundel golf course in which we had lighting facilities in very close proximity to uh, residential homes and so we had to uh, do some serious work. The applicant had to uh, hire a lighting consultant in order to determine that there was going to be no impact from glare on the uh, adjacent residential properties. So glare is something that is part of our uh, consideration in any, any condition of use application. It's never been declared before. Yes. Uh, and I think it in chapter is a little bit different. Yeah. But it's something that you usually do, you'll find it in just about every single one of these today. Because it's one of the things that's listed, as it says above Blair, um, it's one of the things that, that is cited in the conditional use uh, ordinance. It says no dust, odor, vibration, smoke, and in some cases, the gas about Blair, which is the lighting factor. So, taking care of that is one of the nuisances that can be generated. You okay to you know? You want to go I don't want to vote. Back up. Uh, I, still, oh, okay. I still have kind of under, under noise, second sentence. Mm -hmm. However, the board finds that the use is and proposed sound levels. However, the board finds that this use in the BI district and the proposed sound levels are not unreasonable for the use of the district or in the district. Mm -hmm. Something. Maybe get rid of the I think it, that the use is and proposed sound levels are not. Well, it's, it's, yeah, it's just a public question. Is there is any comma there? Uh, okay, this is okay. easier than mine. Uh, right. I'm not an English major. I'm not a word. Okay. Yeah, the yeah. word right. Okay. Oh, yeah. All in favor? Yeah. yeah. Opposed? 978 6. That the physical characteristics of the site, including location, slope, soils, drainage, and vegetation cover are suitable for the proposed use. The applicant proposes no additional site modifications that would impact the existing slope and drainage conditions on site. Motion to approve. Have a second? Second. Yeah. Anyone want to vote? All those in favor? Yeah. Unopposed? 9787, that the use will not constitute a public or private nuisance. No, nu no nuisance will be generated by the proposed use. Motion to approve. Second that. All in favor? Yeah. Not opposed? 9788, that all other requirements and applicable provisions of this ordinance, particularly any per pertinent performance standards are met. The applicant has met all pertinent portions of the Arundel Land Use Ordinance in the design and proposal activities. Proposed activities. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Okay. Open for discussion. Yeah. Is is this where it, it's it's uh, mentions performance standards? Is this where we? Um, should well, we're going to add that. We're going to add that in next. Would be in the yeah. no, it would be in. I would say no, it would be in the uh, conditions of approval. Okay. Good. Unless you want to make a reference to it that the applicants provided <coughs> financial and technical um, evidence of financial and technical uh, capability to do the project. How, how is it usually worded? Do, 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 do we normally uh, have no. a statement like that? Or <coughs> No, well, but well, I mean, because of the plans. bond issue, you could put it in there because that is another pertinent. That is a, a that is another pertinent element. This is a catch-all phrase, basically, well, for so anything in the performance thing. It wouldn't hurt to have it in there to maybe find that to us. So this might be a good place just to state yeah, that. Yeah, should we reference eight ten G? Just let me write something real quick here. Yeah. Bill.
And that was, what again? A10, G3. G3. Okay. If I may, in, in, okay. go ahead. All right. Uh, I would preface that by saying the applicant has demonstrated financial and technical cap uh, capacity to operate and close the facility in the airport in compliance with Section 810G3. G then the applicant has met all pertinent portions of the order land use ordinance and designed the proposed activities. All in favor of that? With the change? Yeah. No opposed. Yeah. Did you get a second on it? Yeah. 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 You. Well, you proposed it, but you didn't second it. Why are you with a second on that motion? Well, I agree with you. <laughs> Therefore, be resolved that based on the above findings and conclusions, the Orlando Planning Board hereby approves the conditional use application of the American Iron and Metal LP to operate a solid waste facility as herein presented contingent upon the following. One, no certificate of occupancy shall be issued for the approved improvements until the letter is presented to the Code of Austin Officer and Town Planner by the design engineer certifying that all improvements have been installed in accordance with the approved plan. Two, all site improvements approved in this planning board action shall be substantially completed within two years of the approval date, otherwise this approval shall be deemed null and void. Any change from the approved plan shall require a submittal of revised plans to the board. Yeah, yeah this is general. I gave them, didn't I give that to you, Roger? I gave you those, the two things I just wrote. You got too many of these. Go that one away. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Right, that one and then number five. Okay. Mr. Chairman. What? Question. It says no occupancy okay. permit that is still existing and they're still operating. For the use of the facility, they still have to get a building permit for the putting in the uh, uh, for putting in the um, uh, waste station. Yeah, but there's, a, there's no occupancy permit. They're still operating. True. And you no, can't no, operate no, without an occupancy no, permit. No, no, it just says for the approved improvements. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you read on, it says. I'm Shall be it. issued for the approved improvements. It has nothing to do with the existing building. So I think it was set there. Yeah, well, does everybody agree with that? Yeah, I agree. Too. Okay, number four. The applicant shall submit a letter from the AIM management assuring complete site cleanup and restoration of the site in the event of the facility's closure. Five, this permit expires on May 8, 2017 and must be renewed prior to the permit expiration. So approved by the Rental Planning Board this 28th. Uh, can't be, it's going to be. Uh, Today's the 8th. 8th of May. It's the 8th, yes. But you got 24th of April here. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Is it last time? That's what it was last time. <laughs> this 8th day of May, 2014. How do we vote? Yeah. We yeah. uh, need a motion to, to accept the whole thing, right? Oh, yeah. To approve the findings of that. 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 Yes. Do you second that? I'll second. Okay. My motion is second. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Those opposed? So pass. Okay, well, I wasn't here for the last year. For the record, we should yeah. also indicate that. Thank you. Marsh, can I have those? I need to give that, that copy to him. You want the one with the U in it? Or yeah, like I want the one with the U in Okay. Um, next item, which is taken out of um, order, Thank you. will be um, Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. public hearing on the on Kate's Butter. Uh, Kate's Butter Combine Conditional Use Application Proposal to the Circus 7. 6,047 square foot dairy barn and hay barn on the site of Cade's homemade butter agriculture demonstration facility on a 37.82 acre parcel located at 852 Orlando Road, tax map 5, lot 9 in the R4 district. Daniel and Karen Patry are the owners, and Lucas Patry 
and now it's in memory of the applicants. Anyone here from the public to review this application? No? Okay, I'll close the public hearing. Let's see. And what time, sir? At uh, okay. 7.55. Okay, so go right to pending applications. You don't have to reduce yourself for this now. Are you going in to his letter? Yep. Yep. I do. Okay. Conditional use application. Kate Butter Cow Barn Conditional Use Application proposed. Proposal to construct a 6,476 square foot dairy barn and hay barn on the site of Kate's Homemade Butter Agriculture Venture Facility on a 37.82 acre parcel located at 852 Orlando Road, Axmap 5, Lot 9 of the R4 District. Daniel and Karen Patrick are the owners, and Lucas Patrick and Allison Leary are the applicants. You want to take over from here? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this application um, has been reviewed. I think uh, we received amended site plans that addressed uh, all the board's concerns the last time. Um, I believe that all the board's questions have been answered and that the, uh, the application is uh, ready for uh, board action now that we have a public hearing. The only other issue uh, that is the, the fact that um, part of the, this is part of an overall project and um, we had conditions of approval of, of, that were made in uh, January 6th and the January 6th, 2011 appro uh, approval that mandated before um, certificate of occupancy could be um, issued on the, uh, the butter factory that uh, all the, the screening that was required under that approval be installed prior to that CO being issued. Um, for, for lots of different reasons, including the sickness of the, of the uh, CEO at that time, uh, an interim CEO, and the fact it was winter, uh, that was not that did not occur. Um, therefore, we need to make sure that we, we have some assurances that that activity of screening the, the butter factory uh, does in fact occur um, uh, in some way before this application proceeds. Now we have three different options that uh, we have discussed and the gap that has discussed too. One, I think I sent that all to you in an email. One was, uh, of course, they post a bond for the construction of the, uh, the landscaping. Two would be for uh, that the CO could not be issued for the, uh, uh, the structural, or I shouldn't say that, building permit could not be issued for the structural component of the, of the barn. Um, uh, certainly, uh, uh, since they've, they've started work, they could do they could get a building permit for the foundation, but the continued structural uh, building permit for the continuation of that that barn and the hay barn uh, could not occur until that landscaping was installed. Or three uh, could uh, hold the CO for both the cow barn and for the hay hay barn until such time uh, that the landscaping at the factory is installed. Unless you've got something else, Lucas, I think those are the three best options at this point. Yeah, the um, we discussed the uh, options between the two of us, and um, the one that stood out the most to us was the third one, because if we have any issues with landscaping, then we've got to come back to the board, and as we've seen, sometimes it doesn't always work out that we get a hearing, and it gets pushed out a couple of weeks. I think the best timeline for us is if you hold the certificate of occupancy until the landscaping is done. That way we've got some leeway as to getting the landscaping done. If we've got to change anything, then we can come back and have that freedom of movement to get the landscaping done the way that, uh, the way that best suits the site and the plan. And, this, and remind, just a reminder, this is not the landscaping of the barn at the barns. Yeah, right. Is, the original the the landscaping requested for case mm -hmm. How does the board wish to proceed? Uh, that works for me. It works for me too. It works for you. I see no objection. It's not like a good uh, solution for me. Yeah, on this list would be number two. The third one that you can't bring. And if you look at the findings of fact, two of those. Do I have a clean one? So this, that would mean you can proceed with your work 
This is um, this is one. I believe it's number two on your list yeah. where um, we can proceed with construction and go through the motion, yeah. and then at the same time we can do landscaping. And when the landscaping is complete, let's say you know yeah. by some miracle the barn is done in two months, which isn't going to happen, but yeah. Yeah. we wouldn't be able to get the CO until the landscaping is done if that took three months. But the reason why I like that option the best is because if we have to come back yeah. and we lose a couple weeks here and there, it, we it's, can keep moving. Exactly, it's a little bit looser on timeline. Okay. Okay. I wasn't I wasn't a part of the original review and approval. What's the what's the general nature of the landscaping that still remains? It's for screening purposes. One of the requirements of the uh, of the um, of this particular performance use for performance center mm -hmm. is that there should be screening in the parking lot from some adjacent properties and from the road. And uh, so this isn't landscaping for, for aesthetic purposes. No. This is actually screening. parking screening. Yeah. And it was selective screening, I should mention also. It wasn't uh, the usual large, huge barrier one. It was based on uh, site distances along the highway and on the adjacent property. So uh, the, the objective was to Screen the uh, docks, loading docks, and also the uh, parking areas. Uh, it was a minimalist approach. This is putting in urban lighting all the way across, which is what the proposal in the village report. And in counter to what you're trying to achieve with this kind of facility. Any other comments? Okay. Um, okay, findings of facts and motion for approval. Conditional use permit for case one may go to Powell and Haybarn. Whereas on March 12, 2014, the Rural Planning Board received a conditional use application from Kate's Homemade Board Incorporated to construct a 6,476 square foot dairy barn and hay barn on the site of Kate's Homemade Board Agricultural Demonstration Facility on a 37.82 acre parcel located at 852 Alpha Road, Tax Map 5, Lot 9 in the R4 district. Whereas on April 10, 2014, the Rural Planning Board conducted an advertised public site walk on the premises. Whereas on May 8, 2014, the Toronto Planning Board conducted a public hearing on the proposed project. Whereas the Toronto Planning Board has arrived at the following findings of facts. One, the applicant and owner of the property, Daniel and Karen Patrick. The property is currently used as an agricultural demonstration facility and currently contains 17,728 square foot dairy products production facility as well as a 4,004 foot square foot residence located at 852 Arundel Road in our 4th district. Three, the applicant proposes to construct a 6,476 square foot dairy barn for the housing of milking of dairy cattle along with a 2,800 square foot <coughs> hay barn located to the north of the existing residence on the property. The dairy barn will contain up to 40 head of dairy cattle that will be grazed in the pasture lands to the west and downhill of the barn. Access to both barns will be provided by an existing access driver between the factory, facility, and the residence. A second emergency access from Drew's Mill Road will be maintained and opened by the applicant for emergency fire apparatus accesses. Five, the applicant has received an amended stormwater management permit from the Maine Department of Environmental Protection for the proposed activity dated June, January 27, 2014. Six, the plan will not generate any increased neat peak runoff from the site. Seven, the applicant has submitted a soils erosion and sediment control plan as part of this application and has agreed to implement best management practices itemized in the DEP stormwater management law permit number L24920NJBB. Eight, record plan submitted as part of the conditional use application include the following. Sheet two. Third Amendment Layout Plan, Case Homemade Butter by BH2M Incorporated and dated June 6, 2013 with revisions to March 26, 2014. Sheet 3 details, Case Homemade Butter by BH2M Incorporated and dated June 6, 2013 with revisions to July 16, 2013. Four plans and elevations for the dairy barn prepared by design company and dated April 2nd, 2013. Nine, the applicant's proposed layout meets all of the space and bulk standards for the R4 district 
and is in conformance with coverage and dimensional requirements of the agricultural demonstration facility performance standards of section 8.8, 8.18 of the land use ordinance. Ten, submitted design elevations of both bonds to the pit construction that is consistent with the traditional New England farm architecture as required in section 8.18 B9. Eleven, the facility will be served by existing private water. No septic system will be required for or installed. An enclosed and impervious manure pit will be installed beside the barn to accommodate manure generation. Question, sir. Yes. Along the way, do we have, or does it say, anything about the uh, the uh, fire chief? Submitted a letter that the board has a copy of. Okay. No, sir? Thank you. Okay, you have no concerns. Okay. Conformance with condition use criteria. After due review and consideration, the Arundel Planning Board has determined the application to be in conformance with criteria of section 9.7.h of the Arundel Land Use Ordinance as follows 9.7.h1 that the use is compatible with and similar to the general categories of uses of neighboring properties. The use is compatible with neighborhood, neighboring agriculture use and facilities. It's approved. Side All in favor? Yes. Any opposed? Okay. 9 7 H2. The use is consistent with comprehensive plan and the anticipated future development of the neighborhood in that the comprehensive plan encourages agriculture use in the R4 district. Second. All in favor? All opposed. 97H3, that there is adequate and safe pedestrian and vehicular access to and into the site to accommodate anticipated traffic to and from the use. Since the resulting dairy products produced from the dairy barn will be used primarily in case homemade by the facility, there will be negligible additional vehicular trips generated by the proposed use. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Opposed? 97H4, that there is adequate water supply and sewage disposal available to service the use. The proposed use will not increase the demands for water or septic flow on the property. Second. Second. In favor? You all clear? Just ask that there could be no plumbing at all in, in the bonds? For the cows to drink. Okay. That's good. Okay. <laughs> Right. Yeah. 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 No flush. No flush. No flushing. No flushing. No flushing. Okay. 97H5, that there will be no noise, dust, or the vibration of smoke generated by the use that will at risk affect neighboring properties. In that noise, the nature of the business is not generating any undue noise aside from the dairy herd. Dust. Open spaces will be paved or grass, and therefore the generation of dust by the proposed use will be minimal. Odors, odor. odor may arise from the handling and turning of manure, but they will be infrequent and not unusual for the permitted dairy operation. Vibration of smoke. No vibration of smoke issues are generated on the site. Yeah. All motion to that. Second. All in favor? Yeah. 9786. That the physical characteristics of the site, including location, slope, soil, drainage, and vegetation cover, are suitable for the proposed use. Significant grading will be involved in the construction of the facility. The applicant has prepared a sediment and erosion control plan that must be implemented and maintained during construction. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? All opposed. 9787, that the use will not constitute a public or private nuisance. No nuisance will be generated by the proposed expansion. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? 9788, that all, all other requirements and applicable provisions of this ordinance, particularly any pertinent performance standards, are met. The application has met all pertinent portions of the rental land use ordinance and design and proposed activities. Second. All in favor? Yeah. Therefore, be resolved that based on the above findings and conclusions, the rental planning board hereby approves the conditional use application of Daniel and Karen Patrick to construct a 6,476 square foot dairy barn and hay barn on the site of Case Homemade Butter Agricultural Demonstration Facility on a 37.82 acre parcel located at 852 Arundel Road, tax map 5, lot 9, in the R4 district, subject to the following conditions. The applicant shall complete all screen, buffering, and landscaping, landscaping approved and associated with the butter factory facility to the satisfaction of the corner officer prior to the issuance 
have a certificate of occupancy for the dairy barn or hay barns. Well, that's something that's wrong. that will need, need to change. So we're going to uh, be changing that to, at least my motion would be that we change that to, uh, what was the word in my red Mustang? To, I think that what you read was correct. What I read is correct. Yeah. We changed it. No, um, this is not correct. So number one? Yeah, number one. It says, quote and false on prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. Right. Okay. So right. we're scratching out farm framing Maybe building good. permit. Good. Okay. So that's been scratched. Yeah, that's okay. been scratched. All right. Good. I'm glad you're paying attention. Too many meetings to tell me. Um, that's right. Two, all sediment erosion control structures shall be installed prior to any further excavation or earth moving activities on the site and shall be maintained throughout the construction process. Three, no certificate of occupancy shall be issued for the approved storage building until a sealed letter is presented to the coroner officer and the town planner by BH2M, certifying that all improvements have been installed in accordance with the approved plans. All site improvements, four, all site improvements approved in this planning board's action shall be substantially completed within two years of the approval date. Otherwise, this rule shall be deemed null and void. Five, any change from the approval plan shall require some middle or revised plans to the board. How do we... I'll make a motion that we accept these final facts uh, with that one change about the... Uh, what, six, six, seven? Seven? Yes. Five. All in favor? Yeah. Unopposed? So be it. Yeah. You finally got the other one. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> Sorry, I was late. Like, <laughs> Save the night. But yeah. I knew I was coming. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry, I didn't come in twice. Did, did you have to come in from Connecticut? No, no not today. Oh, that I was last week I was in Connecticut. Oh, I, I, just, I just had a I thought you had family. A no, I just had a. Oh, the planner has to go get a um, document or a map that he needs for the next applicant. So, yeah. Back there already. Go. Mm -hmm. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good luck. Are you for being patient with us? Somebody brought in a map. We'll get what back there. Tad's going to get a map because to address some of the main roads. Yeah. Uh, well, I think somebody somebody walked in with a poster board earlier. No, that's not what Tad. Tad left something at the office. He just went to get him right back. Yeah, that guy. I apologize. Yeah, I don't think he's. Oh. Well, somebody's mulling around. He didn't recognize his face. So. Mm -hmm. well, he's going not for some main road, is it? Yes, that's oh, what he said going. to me. Why was it? Was there a change? I don't know exactly what he's gone to get Tom, so I really can't speak to that. Um, he said he he just um, for Mr. Toothaker. Did you see that? Who's that? John Toothaker. Had he submitted something to do with your application to Tad? Mm -hmm. I thought that's who he said. But Paul, who does it all, right? So.
for the entire board, but I think the intent of requiring the, the new road before further development was one to meet the site distance requirements uh, and more of the um, safety and security for this for the system. I, I think the intent was to have on a plan that this, this was part of any future, not that that necessarily had to be the very first thing. So I think maybe the wording is there. I don't, I don't have, a, have a problem with it personally. Yeah. The other thing is, if I remember correctly, the fact is, between phase one and phase two of the old plan, or what they had proposed is, was something totally different was to be able to access where the old, uh, where the new storage building was, was to even to get access to that area. Okay, where the the new storage building is for building purposes or anything else can be existing through the present entrance. Okay. Yeah, that was for the that was for the first storage building. So that's what that's I'm saying. Got a permit, and, the, and, and the permit was granted for the first storage building. Correct. And it said before you get another storage building or any other improvement, you have to, you guys put in there, you have to have that road re relocated. That, and that, so the question that I asked you is how do you want to handle yeah, that? that? What I was saying is when they had the proposed where the new, the under, before the location of this one was at a totally different location where they would need to put that road in to get at the old building too, instead of where he proposed to put it now, because the location was totally different. 
I think it was really more of a safety issue with Warner because there was there was an inadequate sight distance at the current yeah, location. Current one. Yeah. yeah, it did not meet the sight distance. And you remember standing out there. I mean, you and I stood out there, you know, and we saw that that it was um, that northbound traffic on Route One went into that dip and it was dangerous, especially if you're moving something. Like a oh, boat on a trail. Boat, you're going to see easier than turn out if somebody's standing five feet tall. True. I mean, however, uh, however, the, the guy coming may not see it. Or right. He'd you know, be pretty be blind if he can't see uh, a 40 foot boat pulled in there. That, that may be, but the fact is that was your concern at the time you made that approval. That doesn't mean you can't modify it. I just want to make you aware that that was the condition you put on the, the, the 2012 approval. How you handle it now. Is the is the board's um, is your board's decision? I think for the purpose of yeah. of construction of where the proposed building is now, it is easier access to build the building and before occupancy maybe. Then that's when the road would be put in. So I'm, I'm not clear why the road couldn't be done at about the same time. You, the, you, the way I see it from Paul yeah, Boy's plan is in the spring, now you'd be uh, doing the gravel boat storage and construct the building. And then in the fall would be um, bringing in a new driveway. But the timing seems to be pretty close uh, in the spring or the fall. But could, could they both be all going at the same time? No, because I don't. If I put a road in now, you're going to drive into the containers next to the building. Right. Sure. I need to get the building in a little section of park there and move the containers and box trailers out of there. We use for parts now. I have to have a place to put the stuff. I don't have a place to move it out back here. It's like I said, it's a checkers game. I need to move. I have to do one thing to be able to put the other thing in. Hop, skip, and jump. Yeah, and it will be done probably before winter. That's my plans. That's why I said. That's why I'm saying is to put the storage building up, okay? Yeah. Because where your existing is now, to get the materials and everything else in and out, but with that, because you can't skip over the containers. No. Refresh my memory, Paul, but the uh, the new storage building is to accommodate existing customers, or are you going to be? Yeah. Doing, yeah. I don't have enough room to put. The problem is, is I got enough customers to go in here, but the boats are on the side of the building, the lawn, and I try to move them all back from the middle. So there, there, a lot of the boats are already on the facility right now. They're there today. So there's no additional trip generation being insignificant right. on site because it's the same number of boats that are going in and out of there now. Yeah. So but what do we do about the? Um, Condition we had, uh, I recall, we said, yeah. we said yeah, we would normally have required that driveway to, to move for, for that last building you put in. Well, the hump to be taken out of the road. Yeah, the but we we realized, well, if you're going to be doing this this next project, well, we could delay it. But we did have the conditions before the next building. If, do we have a uh, do we have that wording? I don't have yeah. a copy here, but. Um, well, sorry, but also, essentially that's what you said. You said yeah. before any more improvements were made to the site, you have to. Yeah. Site one, where I the proposed to, yeah. building two would have been, all the blasting and everything else would have had to be done to put the road in. Okay? Since the, the, the building is not going in, the, pers the, the site that was originally proposed, it's a new location. I don't know what that would make us uh, in the condition we had last time. We just delayed. Well, beforehand, beforehand, he couldn't put uh, the, the building in in the old uh, site, too, because the fact is he would have to take all the, the ledge out, okay, before he could even build the building. The building that he was going to turn up with, the old, the, not where he proposed now. 
You got two different locations of the building. Yeah, but the new, the one that's proposed in the plan, that's not too much different than where the yeah, original it was. Yeah, it's, because no, it's, pretty, it's the same location Paul said, and, and it is. It's, uh, the other one, it has a it's different cool. configuration, Marty. You're absolutely right. It came, came in differently, but the entrance to Route 1 is the same because it's the same driveway permit. In fact, I'm looking at the state driveway permit right now. But it, it has a different configuration, you're right, which is why he's redoing Route uh, right. Lot 1. Because the road so the there. issue is you had, break, you had brought up an issue of either CO or timing on how quickly that road, that new road is, is installed. And I would I would be in favor of, of something to allow you to do that in phase two that, that hinged on a condition with the certificate of occupancy to make sure that that road was, the, the new road was under construction and the, or constructed and the, the other entrance discontinued. Both projects kind of like happen right. at the same time. Oh yeah, no, I agree. The equipment's going to be there to do yep. the digging and stuff in the back filling at the same time. We're going to be taking off the top of the material, right. get rid of the crud, move the granite, pop a couple of rocks, crush what we have on site to make the base, and put the road in. Then I can right. move one of the containers out of the way to access that. And then the next thing is to plug off the, the entrance that we have now. It's kind of like one thing has to happen. But I need room to be able to do it. Yeah. Yep. you got to be able to move, maneuver around. you got to move stuff around and do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll just get to the job. So, so what are we looking at timing, John? you want to make it timing? you want to tie it to the CO? Or you want, what, what would work? Well, I, see, I, I agree with Jamie, and I, I'd be comfortable in, in going that. But I'd also be comfortable with the applicant simply combined phase one and two as one phase yeah. and had a duration, a time duration of yeah. a year, year and a half, yeah. um, where you think that wells are going to be done within that amount of time. You want to have this done before the stuff flies. Well, I know. Well, uh, I, just an alternative yeah. to me, a condition that was placed before. Yeah. Okay, so you should be up to the applicant. Right. To, I mean, he's got to be able to maneuver. It's not a, it's not a open facility that he's just got a first thing come to the road. Right. Yeah, yes, he needs to have that right business. So, so we're saying those two phases will be combined to one. And give right, right, give you kind of a year or whatever you, you think yeah. you need to, to get that done. I just broke it yeah. into sections so it's easier to understand yeah. with yeah. numbers, that's all. Well, but we're kind of we're kind of caught done. in the little trap here. So if the, I think this might be a good way to, to let you move forward, get the road in, the, the building in, we'll call it one phase. That's cool. What do you think? A year, eighteen Two months? Phases and seven, this first phase. Three phases. This phase. Is, yeah. <laughs> we get an approval on this. I'm going to the bank borrowing the money for everything, and we're going to start on the storage building immediately, and you know within a month or two, hopefully, because I got a time frame yeah. to put that up because I got to start getting stuff ready to put you know to do, and I got that road in well before fall hits. Okay. So you're already starting to think about what? What's that? You're already starting to think about when? Yeah. That's what it makes his money. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't go away. <laughs> Storage is what keeps the crew going. Okay, so will I get a motion from someone to make an amendment? Yeah, that was your idea. Well, I like, I mean, I like the idea for simplicity of, of combining phases one and two in your application. I think that then you don't have the issue of coming back and demonstrating that something's been done before you get a certificate of occupancy. And it's, it's a much cleaner yeah. for the applicant, I think, to do it that way. So yeah. I don't, I, to me, I don't know if we need a motion for that. Yeah. Yeah. He's just right. If you do that, I want to, what we need to do. Yeah, so find the fact that we need to say. Okay. Yeah, that's more of a that's more of a work scheduling phase yeah. in there. Yeah. yeah. Building anyway. And you're comfortable with that. I just want to get going. I know. Make it happen. Um, Still so I'm gonna put some wording. Also Number six in 
Yeah, but yeah, you've, already got it. you've already got it yeah. described here in number six. We can just correct. We work that. We just actually the easy way to do it is to just stretch out the B in phase two and just yeah. that can be number. So C becomes B, D becomes C. And then they in the intro put three phases. Yeah, three phases instead of four phases. So we're eliminating which phase? Two. <laughs> Well, one is one, 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 one. Right. Okay, so, okay, I understand. B is included in phase B and C. Right. Okay. C is D. Hop, skip, and jump. We all set? Yep. Okay. okay, findings of facts and motion for approval of Southern Main Marine Expansion 2014. Whereas on February 27, 2014, the Arundel Planning Board received a plenary site plan application from B P B L Holdings LLC to remove an existing 1,125 square foot building and box tree was constructed and construct a 6,000 square foot retail building, 11,000 square foot storage building, new access driveway from Route One, and construct a 23,500 square foot gravel boat and storage yard on 2.9 acre parcel containing an existing marine sales service and storage facility. Located at 2461 Pony Road, tax map 12 lot 2, 4-2 in the BI district. Uh, one change we're going to make there, and we get application in there twice. Yep. Okay. Whereas on March 27, 2014, the Arundel Planning Board and the Arundel, the Arundel Planning Board conducted a public site walk on the per, per project site in the corner for Section 9. AF3C of the Arundel Land Use Ordinance and determine the legitimacy of request by the applicant for a variety of application submission waivers. You've got to clean out uh, one section, you've got to deal with planning yeah. more twice. Yeah. Whereas on April 10, 2014, the Arundel Planning Board conducted a public hearing, that's incorrect. Be no. May 8th? No, 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 we didn't do that. That was on April 10th. Oh, that's right, that was on okay. Uh, public hearing of the project after duly notifying the bodies of the post, posting an advertisement in the General Tribune on the Arundel Town website. And whereas the Arundel Planning Board has determined the following findings of fact and notice of decision. Findings of fact. The owner and applicant of the property are PBL Holding LLC. Two, the property is located at the Fallen Road Tax Map Fault Light 7 02 in the BI District. Three, the property is approximately 2.9 acre in size. Four, the property is currently used as a marine sales and service facility as an on off season boat storage facility. The applicant proposes to re subdivide the adjacent lot, also in PBL Holdings, remove an existing 1,125 square foot building and box trailers. Construct a 6,000 square foot retail building, a 11,800 square foot storage building, and a 20,500 square foot gravel boat storage yard. Period. Period. The indoor boat storage structures will be will not contain any facilities including electrical, plumbing, or other utilities and service at this time. The proposed project will be constructed in three phases, consisting of the following: Phase one: Construct a 72 by 165 foot indoor storage building. Construction of the approved access road across the proposed lot one into lot two and a closing of the current substandard access point at the northern end of the property. Phase two, construction of 6,000 square foot retail facility. Phase four, construction of an, I'm sorry, phase three, construction of an outdoor gravel storage area. The proposed building meets all setbacks and dimensional requirements of BI district as established in Section 6 of Land Use Ordinance. Due to the increase in impervious service and the concentrated runoff, the applicant proposes to install an extensive series of stormwater detention facilities to accommodate the maximum build-out of the facility. The proposed design meets the stormwater design performance standards of Section 713. The proposed project will not yield any net increased peak runoff from the site in a 25-year storm event. The applicant proposes to close off the current road in phase uh, phase four. one and re-landscape the area with loam and grass and seed five seed five street trees as indicated on the plan in the corners of section 
7.6 C3, C. Uh, 10, documentation provided by the applicant including, including an existing conditionals plan, a site plan, a grading, and site plan and grading, utility and layout plan, and a detailed sheet prepared by Paul Gadboys, PE, dated January 27, 2014, with revisions to April 28, 2014, along with stormwater calculations prepared by Paul Gadboys, uh, PE. 11. The Arundel Fire Chief has testified the existing hydrogen resources on Route 1 are sufficient to meet the fire protection needs of the proposed project. 12. The proposed project is not located in or in close proximity to the Shoreland Zone District or critical wildlife resources, and therefore will have no impact upon the resources. 13. The proposed project improvements are estimated to cost $350,000. Performance with site plan approval criteria. After due review and consideration, the Arundel Planning Board has determined the application to be in conformance with the criteria of Section 9.8 F.4 of the Arundel Land Use Ordinance as follows. The proposed project conforms to all standards of the zoning district and meets or exceeds performance standards specified in Section 7, 8, and 9.8 of this ordinance. B. The proposed project does not require any state federal permits. C. The proposed project does not unreasonably impact public safety and fire protection and will not create a financial burden for the town of Rondell and the provisions of emergency service and law enforcement to the project site in the neighborhood. In that the Arundel Fire Department has determined that the adequate fire protection resources are available on Route 1. The project will generate no additional traffic or situation and will increase demand for public safety resources. The proposed project will not have an adverse impact upon the quality of surface or groundwater resources. E. The project provides adequate stormwater management facilities, produce no additional peak runoff from the site during a 25 year storm event, will not have an undue impact on municipal stormwater facilities and downstream properties. F, the proposed project will not have an adverse on-site and off-site impact upon existing vehicular and pedestrian circulation systems within the community or neighborhood, or neighborhood, in that the proposed project will not generate any additional vehicular trips into the site. The, G, the proposed project will not have an adverse impact upon environmental quality, critical wildlife habitat, marine resources, important cultural resources, or visual quality, of the neighborhood surrounding of your own and the, of, of the community, and that the project is not located in or close to proximity to such resources. <coughs> the proposed project will not produce noise, odors, dust, debris, glare, solar obstructions, or other nuisances that will adversely impact quality of life surrounding parcels, and that the proposed facility will not be serviced by any utilities other that can produce off-site nuisances and the proposed use as enclosed cold storage will not generate dust odors or such nuisance. I, the proposed project will have a positive physical impact on municipal government and that the property tax revenue and general proposed activity will exceed the cost of municipal services demanded by the activity. Do we need a, a motion to accept that all of that here? Or? No. no. Okay. This is different than conditional use. Yeah. Is yeah. This is just findings of fact. Therefore, be it resolved, based on the above findings and conclusions, the Arundel Planning Board hereby approves the plenary site plan application for PBL Holdings, LLC, to remove an existing 1,125 square, square foot building in box trailers and construct a 6,000 square foot retail building, the 11,000 square foot storage building, a new access driveway from Route 1, and construct a 23,500 square foot gravel bull storage yard on 2.9 acre parcel containing an existing marine sales service and storage facility located at 2461 Polk Road, tax map 12, lot 4 2, and BI district, subject to the following conditions. One, the applicant shall post with the town of Ronald a performance assurance in the amount of agreed to by the town planner as either a letter of credit, tri party agreement, or escrow account prior to the commitments of work on each phase of the site or the issuance of a building permit for, for each phase. Two, no certificate of occupancy shall be issued for any of the phases of the proposed project until the design engineer certifies in writing to the town plan that all improvements have been completed in accordance with these approved plans. Three, all soil erosion control devices shall be installed prior to the construction of site work, and no site work shall be shut down for the winter until all required soil subdivisions, stabilizations, mechanisms described herein are made it effective. So approved by the Rural Planning Board this eighth day of May 2014. How do we call? Have a motion? A motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Yay. Yeah.
Up for discussion? We have a dilemma, though, gentlemen. Huh? We have one dilemma, of course. The problem is that the mylars that Paul has given me for yes. me to sign has four phases of them. <coughs> now, uh, <laughs> could could they proceed? And all we need to do is just check the note, probably. It's just well, if his bank's okay with that, that's fine. I mean, we can give him this findings of facts, which I will attest to, and then he can give that to the bank. He still, he still has to give me his cost estimates, right? Yeah. So that, that that's so something we have to put, do. Uh, Signing a mylar for a site plan, I mean, it's... He's got the phases on it. Right. Uh, right. But is that, doesn't necessarily, something the bank is going to want to see if he's got a... If the bank board. wants it, that's the only issue. Otherwise, it doesn't affect the approval. So we, we would need a new front page with the notes with that phase change, we should, because it, yeah, if we're yeah, signing... Yeah, I don't feel real comfortable striking it out and yeah. uh, initially in yeah, the line, line, record line. So, I think we should get the revised mylar, but we we have approved of, of the, you can proceed. Yeah. yeah. What so I'll do is, I, we'll to just to sign it when, whenever we get that new mylar. Yeah, and reproduce it. Yeah. I will sign, I will test the, the letter of uh, the findings of fact and approval that yeah. he can take the bank. And it'd be important to talk with Paul, too, to break out those costs by phase. Yes. And and now those two will be combined. Yes, when right. Does it. Yeah. And you just have to bring the knapsack. That way you won't get delayed from the bank. Right. And, and Paul can drop off those mylars anytime. Yeah. So, so you got a different copy of what you didn't like that description you got today? Uh, uh, right well, no, I love the I love the stuff I got. Oh, you mean uh, I just I need I need to book it down a little bit more. Okay. Okay. Because it's lump sum. What's that? It's a lump sum. It all depends on how you... If you're going to give me a lump sum escrow, that's fine. But if we're going to do a tri-party agreement with your bank, right. then I have to have it broken down. I thought, so I, that, gave it, you, I thought I gave you on that last email individual items of each project to be done. I'm not sure I saw that. Yeah, well, I got a copy of my partner for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, fine. We'll deal with that tomorrow. Or yeah, we'll deal with that Monday. To, that's why I gave you the first trip around the block. <laughs> <laughs> three points. Three points for you. <laughs> Twenty-six thousand for that. Last team needed seven thousand. Phase two, phase three, three thousand. Yeah, these are these are lump sums. That's uh, how much more. That's what I got written down on a piece of paper for the excavation work in the roadway and everything else. Yeah. Well. Well, how else do you want me to put that then? I mean, you're talking thirty-five thousand dollars yeah, for digging around a foundation and stuff. Well, yeah, there's no other things that are missing out of it. That's all. What are you looking for? Well, we have to. You want to go over it right now? Okay. Landscaping, loan seed, finished uh, structures. Um, I mean, he's got an estimate here on blasting. That's good. That's terrific. Um, and that's just needed. Right, that's needed. New road is 26,000 with the drainage pond. That's one drainage pond. What about the other drainage pond? There's three of them. Um, there's, there's a lot of detail. Because you have three, you have phases that you're going through. And you have one pond, you have additional stormwater each time you do another phase. And he's only listing one of them here. That's, that's why I was asking. Well, a secondary parking lot, part of that number, is that uh, wetlands pond you want to next to the other building? Well, that's why I, I was. But so you need to have it written down. Need it broken out a little bit. I can do that. Okay. Now that's that's a, only if he's not going to provide you a lump sum surety for the project. Oh, I still I still need to know. I need to verify the numbers. Okay. Okay. The detail behind it. There's detail behind it. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. For the bank. Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. But I will put this in the file. Okay. 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 Okay.
That's it. Cool. You got approval. I will send you some more information. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. We'll get you this, and when Ann does it, um, she'll, she'll give me the final copy, and then I'll sign it off to the bank. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Item three. New applications. Item one. Of the new applications. Love and Joy subdivision sketch plan application for a major subdivision. Proposal to construct a five lot cluster subdivision serviced by a 725 foot private way on a 17.97 acre parcel located at 295 Limit Road, tax map 28, lot 6 in the Ottawa District. Peter Lovejoy is the owner and applicant, and Truth and Associates is the applicant's agent. Who has these plans? Because I'm missing a whole bunch of them. And we handed them out one meeting and then you handed them back to me. That's right. You didn't meet. That's right. So, I can think of one. Hold on. I tried to print out from the... Because I'm not... I don't have them all. Next door. Next door. Okay. We'll have to share. We do not make a file folder with this one. I have a page. Well, sketch. Because it's sketch. Did you get it? Can you go? Yeah. I know, I did. I gave mine back. Oh, you did? So all we have is, there's two maps, Joan. These are conceptual plans. I've got two sheets, two of two. Yeah, they're, they're, but if you look at them, they're different. Okay. One has a road that goes in. It's basically got a hammerhead on. The other one is a cluster. I don't know how that happened. Because you guys want to get out of here. Um, I don't know what that is. But we'll tell you what. We have an extra one of those. There we go. You found yours? Maybe two of the same. Did you open it? If they're two of two, they're not two they're different. different. Did you open it? No. Uh, open it. Yeah, they are different. They're different. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. John, you ready? Step on up. All right. Just as, as a prelude, uh, this is a uh, subdivision application of your sketch plan. The applicants uh, yeah. coming to get input from the board before it. And uh, uh, I know we did a site walk, what was this, about a year ago? Two years, years, two years, years, years ago. Two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. You might want to do it again. We have one, uh, one member who was, uh, wasn't was here. And uh, I don't know if everybody else did. I didn't make this uh, site walk. You didn't make it. So we might want to reschedule that. But I'll, I'll give it to you, and you make the, the presentation on the sketch. Sounds good. Okay. I'm, I'm John Kutheka, the reason. Peter Lovejoy is the former, he's here today for, uh, about two years ago we turned in some paperwork to get some thoughts on paper about looking at a preliminary subdivision, um, the nicely located parcel, uh, Peter was looking to do some changes on his property, so we looked at doing some soil testing, we started doing the test pit, then we had a survey, boundary survey, we had a topo, so we're trying to get together our thoughts on how we wanted to lay out a subdivision. So we've come up with a couple of plans, and we took the ordinances and kind of looked at them, um, just trying to get some ideas from the planning board, what you'd like to see, to get your thoughts involved in it too. We might actually, you should have one that's a six lot subdivision, and by the time you start pricing everything out with road, infrastructure, and cost, it can balance and close to the, to the six lot. It's just, it's a, truly where it's at. For the numbers. So I think you should have one of six lots. The one I have up here is six. That's the uh, one with the cold set, right? Correct. Yeah. And what we did is we tried to balance within the lot, uh, the uplands and the wetlands, we tried to balance the lot road. And we actually got to fill these lots by doing it. So, try to keep the houses up and dry. But I do think we should have it on the side. Before the mosquitoes get too thick. Before the mosquitoes get too thick, yeah. I should mention also uh, that 
this is a cluster, this is a mandatory cluster situation. It's over six acres. I actually thought the cluster worked well. But in this case, it really didn't. Yeah. It allowed a lot to be just a little bit smaller. And we dedicated a lot to open space. Yeah, I think it can reduce the size of the lot significantly. You just have to provide more open space. Right. Yeah, there is there is wetland in there. I mean I I delineated it No, I'm just saying there's a lot. Oh well, there is? It's wet. I remember walking it last time. So, uh, since I'm not familiar with that, I have a few questions about um, this in six, but uh, there's a few on the road. They're, they're separate, privately owned. They did the two right on the road, or at least one of them on the road isn't on his. Because it is. The ones that we're proposing are there. The well, they're six. there. The so, one with that has what I'm wondering is, is where the overall right. property boundary is. Is, is, is it? Right up to Limerick Road, both ends. Is this a separate? This is already a separate lot. Yeah. Okay. Yes, this is. Yeah. And this is already. This already exists. Yeah, that's correct. You drive it here, and you get to be the side of the road. So right now, the, the that property is, 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 is everything. Right yeah. now, it's all one except for this. Correct. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, all right. Good. Thanks. This is just to remind the board. This is this is a sketch plan. This is to get input from the board. Um, so would this be a, a six lot or a seven lot subdivision? But do you count the the original as? Seven one piece. We have the board has taken into consideration existing within within it, so that would go into your your net calculations and the, the rest of it for the whole project. There's already a, a, a building there, a dwelling there. There's going to be six more. We have out. So I'm just, I'm not sure. I, I, my math says that one plus six is seven. So it, this is seven lot subdivision? Mm -hmm. No, that's already there. Yeah, that's or an existing lot. This is the parent lot. Where, where right. Peter's, where Peter's um, work basically where his business is. That's that's the existing lot. Yeah. Okay. And then there's the, there's yeah, one on the frontage that's that fronts a small house that fronts, and actually it doesn't show a structure in it. Yeah. So we're not counting that one. They added Karen Gorman, just oh, it's three, right. three, four, five, six, and then the remainder. Right. But this one, this one's different because it, this is this is showing a lot of. This one. This is part of a bigger lot. Yeah. Yeah. This has a lot. The parent lot. Yeah. The parent yeah. lot's been that's it's been you know in your possession or ownership for. I've had my house here for 15 years. Right. Now, my shop and everything. And this part I'm trying to break off. Right. And separate it. Six more lots. Yes. Yeah. Be, it's still, it's still. Uh, if you're referring to road standards, it's the same, whether it's six or seven. But well, yeah. So if I just if, when I was reading, besides, he's got access from, from the road. Well, I guess. Well, it's so it's we have 50 feet of road frontage here for that development. Okay. Right. Now, what? Yep. So an, another what question is: Is your? Um, I know this. This all. This is all. You just. It's early stage, it's still there. But your um, your resident, your 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 building, that's going to be um, have a it needs to have a, a property. Yeah, I'll have a separate deed. Yeah, separate separate deed. Deed. yeah. Okay. So right now is the open space not really clear. Right, my house is seven acres by itself. Okay. Will the open space be 
separate from so your yes. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, that has to be done. But that's okay. The, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, 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 you have to, to know what what is going to be the subdivision in order to do those calculations. Right, you're going to separate the the existing now. No, no, no. What other criteria? Uh, the access strip cannot be counted as, as part of the uh, um, minimum lot area. So the access strip would be this portion. Is there a logging road in there? No, it <coughs> no, doesn't have Or is that a stream that I see coming back to the field conforming? Around in the cul de sac going to the back of the property. Oh, that's the trail. Yeah, that's where oh, that's the snowmobile trail. Right. Yeah. Well, you guys put everything in there. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, okay. I didn't know it to be a log road. to be a, you know, an old. No, that's the snowmobile trail. There's a trail and you walk to the pipeline bit. People walk and stuff. And, you know, the, we call that trail. Eastern Trail. Eastern Trail. Right. I didn't know you could use snowmobiles on the Eastern Trail. <laughs> oh, we no. just cross it. <laughs> Um, oh dear. Let's so how is us uh, watch how site distance right there, there where you? Uh, that's all right. You don't yeah, foresee any issues? I mean, I have to go back up look at it. Yeah. Let's be honest. With you. Let's be I didn't drive high at night, but um, I know it's fairly flat today, but I'd like to look at it again before we do that. Picture. What's that? Site distance. Just thinking of where that road is situated. It's at it it's flat. flat. It That's why I can't picture where No, it is flat because it's down here, Mark Walsh, across the street. Right here. Yep. Okay, it's all flat all the way through there. There's no dippies or anything else. No, I didn't, that's right because uh, yeah, it's yeah. all flat. That piece of, yeah, I know where you're talking about. So, yeah, that's like, so yeah, we'll look at it. But it is a 35 mile an hour road, even though it's. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't believe it or not. Yeah. It's just that's that. That's what it's breathing at. It's oh, yeah. it's breathing at. Right. It's just, it's just flat, flat, but, but it's affecting well on the road. You did a good job that's finding the upland uh, spots to locate the houses. And that was with the cluster provision, though. Because yeah. the other provision, it just wasn't working. Do you, uh, have you done a, a quick estimate on what you think the wetland impacts will be for the road coming? I actually started going. For the first lot, because originally um, we filed something at the town to come across, and he went one lot. So I did the stuff with DEP, filled out the permits and stuff, and had to open up the application. But um, they were they were good with it, but they didn't know what else was going to go on. And at that point, we didn't know, so we're going to have to refile that yeah. open application. But I knew that we could get it to work. It seemed like it would probably max the tier out. Is what I remember. The tier two. Yeah. It could go into a tier two. Okay. But I know that it was going to max the tier one out. But when the EP and I, I was very honest with him, I said, what, you know, this is nice probably, but we do that one of the so we're going to be real about it. And I remember I was talking, it would probably tip that tier one. Yeah. It's close. Yeah. So that's why we kind of redid the plan again to try to um, avoid and minimize. And we just keep trying to shuffle it on camp. But I think we'll probably get the best we can get it. To get the balance of, so come to the balance. Oh, that yeah. means I really don't want houses in those spots. Mm -hmm. Not that a road is it's a better place for a road, but um, the specs is a lot, a lot more material than there. Um, at the back of it is actually the spots of this well, of the, some of it is um, not as it's a, it goes back to. When I came in, I was talking to Pat a little bit about the soils and stuff, and it's the clay under that sand. Yep. And out there, what it does is it vibes, and when it vibes, it just comes in at different depths. So you can walk to a spot of that wetland, and you're like, this is wet. You go over there 20 feet, and you're like, you're standing in water. It is, it is the way the soil is out there. And these back lots, though, actually have really nice sand on top, and then you go into that clay, but it's not as dense, but then as you keep going, Get down at five or six feet, dense. So it, the site itself just changes. Yeah. That's actually a chronic problem. That's like a road in that area. Right. It's just it's like 
to, to me, it, and I'm a certified social scientist, I've been doing this for 20 years, it, it, when we were thinking of the tax cuts, it was like, it's a great place for a test because nobody would believe your finances, it was just so different. And then you sat comparing to the county soil, and they were different there as well, too, and I'm like, it's just the way it is. We need, we need to have um, really good road infrastructure, drainages, stormwater. I mean, I'd like to see things wave. However, stormwater, that's probably one of the most important ones because you're trying to get this to work with engineering. Stormwater is a key one. How are we going to get water to move where we want to go to? What's going to make the best of these lots? Yeah, I don't think the tension is you know I mean? the problem. The problem is moving it out. Yeah. yeah. But on that subject, too. Fire pond, we have a pond in the center. We know some of the neighbors have fire ponds. What do you think about that? That's best to address. The, we we want not to touch that. We give that to the, the fire. fire. You, want to talk to the fire you want to talk to the fire chief about that. Um, we do have standards in our subdivision ordinance on. I'll have to go over that. We have standards in the subdivision ordinance on fire ponds for this is east of the turnpike. Right, if you do fire pond, you have to do sprinklers. Okay, that's probably more fire pond. No, it's the insurance issue. Yeah, it's it's page thirty-three in the subdivision. Yeah, subdivision. We may have your subdivision ordinance with you. Okay, um, let's see. Areas west of the turnpike subdivision for five or more lots per you shall provide adequate water storage facilities and most fire chief has indicated that adequate facilities for water storage through proximity uh, to the proposed subdivision. In areas east of the main turnpike, planning board in consultation with the fire chief may require the subdivider to provide water storage facilities. Facilities may be dry ponds. Maybe ponds with dry hydrants, underground storage reservoirs, or other methods acceptable to cheap. These should be granted to the municipality granting access to and maintenance of dry hydrants. The board may waive the requirement for water storage only upon submittal of evidence that the soil types in the subdivision will not permit the construction and installation. The fire chief has indicated or writing the alternative methods of fire protection are available. The board shall require that whenever a fire pond is required, shall be constructed and approved by the fire chief. There's other. There's a one that's actually more stringent, though. I'm trying to remember exactly. That is in section eleven. Now I've lost it. Should have it. Talking to the fire chief is the first thing, but we also need to. There's three fire ponds are around me. I know. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the first thing you, you start with is, is that one. Uh, deal with the chief on that. The uh, the other issue is don't forget to do your net residential density. Okay, you get a lot of wetlands here. You have to do that one. And um, how's the board want to proceed on this? You want to. So, uh, sidewalk date? Go out yeah, there? Yeah. I think we should look at this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see. We're doing it on the 22nd. Mm -hmm. We could, but I think we'd be pretty busy that night. Well, we would do a sidewalk before the meeting anyway. Yeah. yeah we're going to need some time on this one. I could do a half hour of sidewalk. No, we want to walk this and do this right. Right, exactly. You, know, you, need, you need to dedicate at least 45 minutes to it. As I recall, it's tough going. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And bring your boots. June 12th is the first meeting in June. The first meeting in June is June 12th. I wish you do another day. Otherwise, you'd have to do it. Are you on any schedule? We'd like to keep the ball rolling, but we want to do it as a team effort with you guys. You know, we want to make sure things are good. I don't want to cut a ton of money, more money of this than everybody just, you know, it would be nice to get more input as we go along. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would agree. And we got plenty of daylight, you know, now. Yeah. June 12 is even better. Yeah. 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 I mean, can we keep coming to the means if I do the density? And 
that way we don't lose our yeah, spot. Yeah, well, the 22nd, the 22nd is going to be a public hearing on the zoning ordinance. So that's going to probably pretty, that's going to be the whole night. That's the only thing we're doing that night anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's all we got to schedule. That's the 22nd. That's the next yeah. regular party we're doing is on the 22nd. That's a no no for you. And then the only other thing that, yeah, and then the next one will be June 12th, which is our next scheduled public hearing. Or the next scheduled plan. So that's what you want for June 12th. And what, what would we consider for a site walk? Do I do it before the meeting? Oh, yeah. 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 The other thing is you want to have. For the sidewalk, you want to have it laid out in such a way that where you want staked out where the house is going to go and road. Yeah, because to the road. Also, you, you have you have several test pits no. for all of the back property. Yes. You want to verify your other ones as well. Yes, I'll do that. So if you can have the road center line, the cul-de-sac, the buildings, um, your test sites. Well, uh, we're going to have to get part of this wetland flag, too. Yeah. Already it do was that. flag, but again, it's two years ago. So what I'll do is I'll hook up the GPS and go up and tie some stuff up. I'll make it look good so you can see where you're at. And I'll take the GPS with us, and we'll be <coughs> on the screen so you can we'll just walk it through. That sounds good. Anybody want anything else? We're talking about June 12th. Right now, you don't have anything pending for that, for that day. Where's the town meeting? Where's the town meeting? Huh? Town meeting is the 11th. Wednesday 11th. So we make it for 5 30? Sidewalk? Uh, it's hard for me to get out. Yeah, it's going to take. I'll meet you there, but I'm not going to promise 5 30 for me. Yeah, I'm going to leave. All right, 5 30. I remember the first time I was going to the back. Take a half hour to get ourselves straight from Boatsburg. Take a half hour to find it. No, it's not easy to get into. Yeah. Actually, the hogs get on the ground. Yeah, you have to go around, actually. Well, last time when we did it, we walked, we parked at Peter's Paul's shop. Peter's shop and then walked down through the existing, around the existing yeah. pond. Yeah. It wouldn't be as easy to do that. No, it's easy to go that way. Yeah. It's much easier. Okay, so uh, sidewalk June 12, 530. Okay. We'll post this. We're just going to keep submitting or I'll keep. Yeah, yep. Thank, Thank you, you Okay. Appreciate it. Sure. Okay. And uh, for direction, for the, I mean, they'll give you more direction at the sidewalk, but I mean, right now the funding board is, is partial to the, the uh, call to site and the, the cluster, right? Yes. Yeah. It's mandated by the we don't it's, we, mandated. And, and it's also we, a better design. We, yeah, we, we don't have the authority to change that. So this is the yeah, this is that's right. Right. you like us on you saying you yeah. like us on? Mm -hmm. Go with that point. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Next item up on the agenda. Where's motor sales? Revision of approved conditional use permit. Proposal to eliminate all approved landscaping on the five foot island between Route One and the customer parking lot at Wesmo Road in Five foot fifteen fifteen proposal of tax map thirty three lot two in the highway commercial district. Vendor is the owner. Linda Zook is the applicant. David Graham, architect, is the applicant's agent. Paddles. Mr. Plan, I'll let you take over. No, I'm going to let the applicant do that. He's much more eloquent than I am. See? <laughs> yes. Come on up. So we can get you on TV. Get your best side. Now, we are in the uh, automotive business, not landscaping. And anything that grows in front of vehicles hides them. I've been, I've got, I had that experience at the uh, I propose to do a uh, artificial turf, which doesn't need any maintenance, it doesn't need irrigation, doesn't need to be cut, do not waste energy. Perfect. Looks good. I got a piece now. Too. 
Yeah. It doesn't include the cars either. The power. All the uh, schools now that you afford it, they use. Yeah. Or, uh, or, or play on. Yeah. Or I could afford that for in my house. <laughs> yeah, but it's kind of hard the cows to eat, isn't it? Yeah, the cows are crazy down here. Well, sure you do. They're four wheels. Cows. I'm not sure about four wheels. You don't have to mow it, and there's no real hands. And a lot less dirt. Perfect. Plus, it looks like that year round. That's a nice. So it looks natural in the summertime. Green, green grass. If you, um, like, the shrub is very hard to grow mm -hmm. next to the highway like we have. Mm -hmm. If you go to ditch, there's another thing. But if you go on, um, it's even harder with that look the calcium they put down. If you go to ditch, uh, so crossing, you got a whole bunch of shrubs in the middle of the highway there. Yeah, it's all there. Plus the bark balls are easier to try to catch a fire. <laughs> the only thing that's easier to handle than this is bark balls. Oh, yeah. no, that's catching the fire. Oh, it Yeah, because it turned out the heat. Spontaneous combustion. You know, it's in the hot embers. Look what happened today in the old orchard. The hot embers. Yeah. Is this it right here? That was, that was the approval. Yeah, from last time. That's what you and call your green vegetation. There was also the, uh, the copy of the yeah. map. I have the letter. I didn't have any plan. Well, there was the plan. I got that. I got call low maker. maker. You got a copy? Here it is. I got some more of these. Oh, there we go. I'm sorry. I didn't hand it out. My mistake. This is the plan that was approved. And you remember, it's significantly, it's, you no longer have that, just the five foot. It was expanded, if you recall. This is what was approved last year as an amendment. Yeah. Yeah, before they turn it, it had to be the sidewalks. What? Even sidewalks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the heated sidewalk. Yeah. Somebody checked your concrete already. This is no one. The old one. Grass down here with, with no curve. And you can't plow. You can't plow grass. This is sure you can. No. I do. You plow it off. No, I just slide right over the top of it. You do? So you see me. I didn't go. I didn't turn out to replace a lot of divots this year. Excuse me, Ben. Are you aware You're that lucky. this is the new plan? That that's an old plan that's been superseded by this plan. Yeah. That's what you were approved for for last year. Material art is basically uh, daylilies uh, with a brick. And you remember, it's a brick paver path. It, the detail is shown here. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, daylilies because they could tolerate the, you know, the impact of the, uh, of the, the snow plowing and the, and the, uh, uh, the calcium and all the rest of that. That was the plant material that was specifically selected because of the conditions in that area. They, uh, then somebody threw in the grass down here. Yeah, that was one thing that was required and, and that you put in grass and some shade trees. Well, and now, but I gotta clean this with it. Well, it actually it shows a curve all the way along through here. On the back side? Yeah, it shows on the black, back side and front. Yeah. I, I gotta plow all the front. All yeah, the this small is the highway. Huh? That's the 
that's the highway. Final. Well, I have to think. I have all my life. Okay. Because if you don't, everything just builds up in front of it. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it visible. And turn out because because the state doesn't plow it the right way. Right. The state doesn't plow it the right way. You all right for one day? Yeah. yeah. Most of the properties along the way don't uh, don't abut the town line, uh, to your property line, because there's always recessed. Mm -hmm. And we've had that always before. Tar. This was amazing. Bentar. Yeah. I think this was. A, that's that was the last year. That's the same as this. Yes. 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 Okay. That's the reduced version. Okay. That's a reduced. This has more detail. It also has the planting schedule as well. So basically what it is is brick pavers and uh, with uh, islands of... of uh, basically, I don't want to farm on the one. Well, then we have, we, have a, we have an issue here, Joe. I mean, and you know what the issue is, and that is your requirements of your, of your uh, buffer that's required in this particular district. And this was your compromise. We've got, we you got the buffer. We've got the buffer. No, the landscape buffer. Um, I'm, well, I'll just read it for you and the board's, board's benefit, just so you know what the board's dealing with here. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're going to say, well, I think it's a good one. Yeah, that's one of the points that we were supposed to be doing. Yes. Not that we're doing the other way. It's not a good thing. I've got a little statue. Was that a the stuff that I have right here. Uh, it says basically. Um, okay, go ahead. Okay, requirements in section 76C3B, which reads all parking lots shall be landscaped along the property boundaries with shrubberies, trees, and other landscaping materials. This landscape area shall be a minimum of 15 feet wide, except in HC, CCS, and VI districts. In the CCS and AC districts, the landscape area shall be 15 feet wide along any street, 25 feet wide along any side, or real lot lines, abutting lot, residential use. But this building has been here 50 years. And, and it's close to the highway. And it should be grandfathered. The, the only issue so why the planning board did the foundation, right? The planning board originally, as you recall, did in fact reduce that 15 feet down to this this uh, five foot with at the request of the applicant and taking that into consideration. Um, in other situations where there were expansions of an existing building, which we have had, we just had one uh, with the aim, the planning board required the applicant to meet the existing standards. Um, and that occurred with AIM, that occurred with County Auto, uh, in which we actually made people cut pavement to put this in in order to be in conformance because they were expanding the facility. This was an expanding of the expansion of the use, and the planning board did reduce it down to five feet um, uh, in, in deference to the fact that it was an existing facility. I'm not trying to make, them make any changes, but the, the issue still is the, the question of having uh, the separation landscape separation uh, in there and uh, I'm not proposing not the landscape. Well the material they call for is trees and shrubbery. Yeah. And then we've gone down to perennials in daylilies, which are perennials <coughs> which you know come up early and then disappear when, when the bad uh, stuff I'm proposing on. to do this or it looks good year round. Better than well I think that's a man. Well, why is that bad? Why is that bad? I've changed my, covered my, uh, my vehicles. I use to make a living. How does it cover your vehicles? The material's three feet tall. This one. 
No, but that's that's one of the foreground. Yeah, that's trees. You don't like keep growing. But those are trees. <laughs> this is the trees. These are these are these are daylilies. They go three feet tall at the maximum. Some of them are only two feet tall. To take that into account, so it's not like like that. There's anything here that's. And besides, the area where this is involved is actually most of it's customer parking. It's not where you have to display. You have to display here, and you have to display there, and it's not it's not interfering with your display at all. <laughs> Just point it out. You wanted, you didn't, you didn't want it. You didn't want to get up to the end with it. Down. Any comments from the board? Well, as you were turning on referencing and cutting it, BI BI district is not where we're on Route One. Agreed, but this is the same standard we apply in BI and HC and in. This is the HC, this is the CTF. Oh, let's put it this way. As I've stated before, I don't agree with it. Agree, but it's still in the ordinance. And that's the difficulty. Because that was supposed to be part of our bucket list of addressing. Well, when they came in front of us for the uh, application for the changes to the existing structure, one of the compromises was there was going to be a vegetative buffer zone right there. I didn't, I didn't, I'm not disagreeing with you on that. It's still green, too. Uh, it's still green. I don't know. Uh, I've been many rounds on this board, and each time we let we let some go because the next time we'll you'll add the landscaping. And, and it's still not there. So this seemed like a this was actually a, a good compromise because we, we lowered the, there's no you have no trees out front and and it, it's, to me that looked like it's gonna look really nice. The brick you don't have to worry about mowing that. I don't think you have to mow brick. The weeds yeah. grow between them. Yeah, maybe so for you we kill it down once a year or something. Um, I don't know what's wrong with I, I I'm having a hard time with saying what's wrong with, with the brick with the shrubs beside. What's wrong with it? It's, uh, it's 450 feet of curve in here. Moss. Isn't it, isn't it brick? I saw a herringbone brick to sit. sit like curving, so it's curving on each side and then brick. If you want to fill it with brick. It's, but that was agreed upon when you guys came to us in front of us. Uh, what do you mean? Somebody yeah. had to agree with you because it's... <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> you're your age. Here's his own quality. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. Take, that, that's at night. That's at night time, usually. Well, this is one of the areas that I know the board has wanted to address for for a very long time. I, I personally am, am of the opinion that there are several types of businesses. Automobile dealerships being one where that outdoor sales, playground equipment would be another if that's what you're selling. Those sorts of things need to be visual. So I believe that the board should have some uh, ability to, to adjust those requirements based on certain kinds of businesses. Unfortunately, our regular, I'm not even sure how it got approved at this level, because this doesn't meet our, the ordinance, the way the ordinance is written. Um, well, I haven't changed the footprint yet. I'm sorry? I haven't, we haven't changed the footprint. I don't know why we had to because oh, it was an increase in the area. Huh? You, you increased the area. You added the showroom on the side. And you, you added absolutely. additional, you expanded the building. That's why you had to come to the plan board. Because the building footprint expanded. Well, it also went out to the side, too. It went out to the side, too. And then that side expansion. 
in the in all the changes yeah. to the zoning, proposed changes right. to the zoning up through that. What's a quick synopsis of what the landscaping requirements would be? Pretty much the same as they are now. Okay. That's it's a little less if it's 10 feet instead of. But they're 80. Yeah. But yeah. landscaping now? No, proposed. If approved by the if right. approved by the town, it would be similar to what's in the ordinance, and and I don't think we as a board have the authority to unfortunately to go against the board. I I don't think it's in our purview to do that, and I would I kind of like that grass myself. The grass looks good for certain, and, and again, but for certain kinds of businesses, right? the idea down there is to to attempt future builds to, to really have, have that character and so forth, which everybody's been working so hard to do. Um, again, personally, I just think there are certain businesses that it's probably not conducive to. But our current ordinance, I don't think gives us... Well, you might have to change your ordinance. You want automobile dealers in town. Yeah, uh, I'm going to say do I'm not going to say I wasn't heavily involved in, in most of this conversation, so I mean, personally, I think there could be some other landscaping amenities that would go in the buffer that I think would end up being being more natural, more attractive, probably than the the, the artificial grass that you proposed. Um, I'll stay quiet on my perceptions as I've driven by and sort of have always wondered why we're having to do a lot of a lot of the stuff anyway out there, but because that's beside the point. Um, but what I would be well, curious with I like, don't want a lot of fancy stuff out there to distract from my vehicle. Right. And that's where I don't know with the day lilies, you know, if something more of a low profile shrub would be more palatable to to you guys may not be any different. You might not care to have them one way or the other. So, but that's I'm not the landscape designer on the, the plan. Neither are most business owners. No, but this was proposed to us, and yeah. we accepted it. We accepted it. We, we didn't come up with that. You know, it, it, the day lilies were, were proposed as an alternative to the shrubs. Because of the okay. concern, they were proposed because of the concern of a hostile environment, mm -hmm. salt, drought, um, obviously heavy, heavy, uh, heavy snow loads. Yep. Um, because they die back during the winter, right? Um, and what are, there's nothing to, to hit the bulbs. <laughs> and then during the um, during the summer or during the spring and summer, they come up and they provide what you have in there is probably just mulch. That's what they proposed. Was heavy plays and those with mulch with a break in between. It's not a continuous line. It's just islands, small islands of it with a break in between. The break was was the was the thing the architect and and, and the applicant's agent really wanted to put in there as, as a signature as a signature element. And, and that's what they sold the board. Mr. Lavi, you had a comment? Yeah. Uh, isn't grass a form of landscaping? That's what we do all the time. Grass is landscaping, and it's it's my belief that any board in any town has a certain amount of latitude that they can use to to go one way or another. And along with one, you are going to be hard pressed to keep any landscaping. I think we do have some latitude, but we've already gone from a minimum of 15 feet wide down to 8 now. So it, it, we can't get to where it becomes nothing, and we can't wave it. 
inches. But we're also looking at we're also looking at three thousand square feet. Is that is that three thousand square feet? No. What landscaping? Yeah. Most of it's brick. Yeah, four hundred fifty by not maybe not four hundred fifty by. If, I, if, I'm, if I'm looking at this right, along that whole track, there's only like 30, right? What? What? 30 shrubs or day living planning. This is the one that was approved? Yeah. There's, there's yeah. one. There's well, the, the, one, the landscape schedule is right next to your hand. There's one tree. That, that tree is right here. You got one tree here. Yep. This is day living, day living, day living, day living. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, it doesn't even have the, it doesn't even have the, um, that's right, before they planted, they had to come and put the schedule and we had to work that out. So what we have is, these things are 10 feet wide, right? I mean, 10 feet long, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, so, yeah. It's 140, 140, 140 feet out of, out of what? Ben, how, how far did you see? Foot. These are 15 foot in between. So 15, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, How long is the road in front? In four, four, three, three. So it's about a fourth of fourth. Yeah. A, a, a fourth of it contains plantings. Right. Um, with a herringbone. With a herringbone. Uh, right. In between. <coughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And you said that's 15 feet? That's 15 feet. And the road is 15 <coughs> 15 times. Yeah. For me, and, 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 and again, the, I just don't know that. For the landscape material, because it does give you other landscape material, and this is a landscape material that you, you Presenting is not one the board has seen before, but it's a matter of if that's the only thing we're addressing, I think we have the authority to do it. But this is, this this landscape buffer doesn't meet the requirements of the ordinance to begin with. So I'm, I'm not sure how we handle that. That's all I'm saying. So put this so back. Let's put this let's back to the please. Well, why don't you just take it green? Yeah, I mean, when you're back to painting it green again. Well, he's so going to paint it green. Well, that's kind of like... Well, that's green. That's a little plant. You know what I'm saying? Why is the road to keep the daylilies there? No, he's... A, he's well, he's not much plant on the water. He's got a black. He's got a black. He's got a black. He's got a black. He's got he submitted a letter. I can't tell them in my yard. They just come <laughs> back. They keep coming back. Good. Yeah. Ben, Ben's letter to the board requested that all shrubs, flowers, and that be removed, and this artificial turf be installed. Is that a good synopsis? Yeah, of that's what I see. All the brick is removed. Yeah, that's what's in the letter. I saw that. But we made other applicants conform. Right, the standards of the ordinance, and we've got to be consistent in the way we do things. That's where I struggle. Here we, we made Marty do something. Right? Yeah, you made me turn around and redo the plan over to, 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 to verify to verify that they. I mean, wait, 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 let me finish. To verify that the green grass <laughs> will be maintained. Uh, it does bad enough. The green well, grass will be maintained. Ben, ben, you say that we made you. We only this came. From, right. from you all as a Let's proposal. We didn't, yeah. this. We, didn't, we didn't propose this. I can take the kids. I never see that. That wasn't well, a landscape well, architect. That was an architect. I want to make that clear. <laughs> I tried. We, we had the discussion. <laughs> yes, Mr. Dubois. So, just a couple of comments. You know, I think, you know, to Bob's point, I think the board tried to, the board knows how Wears Motors in the past has been reluctant to put any type of landscaping, so the board worked really hard to come with a compromise to at least meet the intent of the ordinance and, and put some landscaping. Now, if you ask me, if you look at County Connection, although they're not there anymore, but you look at County Connection and you look at Arundel Ford, which is right next door to these folks, I think that looks pretty darn nice. Sure it does. 
Yeah, so right why on. why is this any different? Well, the counter, the counter plays a lot of business. It's out of business, but it has nothing to do with what it looked like. It, it, it might have. Yeah. Yeah. So no. so Orlando Ford's not out of business. Orlando well, Ford's doing well. No, but they've got it's not all hot top across the front either. Like yeah, they don't have the drainage ditch. You know, it's a, a little different. different, 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 different situation. You got a ditch there, and you know, all it runs the salt back Sorry. down the ocean before it gets into the. Yeah, there's some there. yeah. When you put vegetation there, Route 1, we're going to be replacing it every single year, Joe. All the stuff from the highway. But, that, but that's why we, I think, make allowing the brick made sense, because the brick's not going to, it doesn't die. Well, well that, that's well, all the brick, brick, the brick's yeah. fine. Yeah. Let me break it all, that's fine. Yeah. We're just a few little no, plantings no. Of, of the daylilies. Please. Well, but really, I'm, I'm serious. I can't, I literally cannot kill. My wife wants me to pull all the daylilies out of the ground. I'll never get them all. They just keep springing up. Are you talking up. about mm -hmm. the tall daylilies or the, those, the little, that, those little? The ones green, that the greens are this high and the, yeah. and the flowers are that they high. They don't last very long. And we know I'm good Some of them are so reproducing. I'll throw some in there for you. My wife wants me to get rid of them. You don't have one. You don't have one. You have one. You have an incredible variety. It's a huge variety in there. Some of which I wouldn't put in Pretty hard to tell. Who brought up the variety? Um, actually, the varieties were offered by the applicants. I didn't, yeah, that I was didn't stuff was proposed by us. I mean, I didn't know, we, we would have I would have made it simpler spec specifications than that. That's that's pretty big fruit salad. That's what it is. It's fruit it's salad. salad. No, it is. It's it's fruit salad. Um, so green is green. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to. I'm not disparaging what the architect did, but I'm just saying it's it's a lot of color. So green is green. The good thing is, no, it's not green. It's, yeah, it's various green. colors, yeah, and the, the interesting thing is they have different bloom times. That's that's why they, they put in so many different varieties. They have different bloom times, so have, there's always some color out there. That, that's the, that was, I think, the architect's intent. How do we proceed with the You make a decision. Or you can defer it. It's up to you. If you want to think about it, you can defer it. Or you make a decision. Or you can go out and do a site, site visit. It's the board's prerogative. And we did a site walk. We accepted this from their plans. Uh, it's an approved plan. That is it. He's asking for an amendment to approve a plan. So, so to a formally amend something, I think we would need a little more detailed information on what they're proposing. I mean, I was under the impression at first that you were looking to put the, the artificial grass along the whole strip. He is. He is. Okay. Then, well, then he mentioned the brick remaining in oh. part of it, or all. No, I just said. If you want a brick, a brick oh, okay. As a con I, I got you. As a concession. Okay. Do the brick instead of the. I think I think the applicant. If you if, if you have a proposal to do this first thing, we have to have an actual proposal on what is it we want to do. Right. You know, what 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 is the, what is the proposal? Besides just getting rid of all the dailies in one tree. And then the grass. Is the grass up for on this too? Because yeah. I think you basically it said it was the. You know, the the letter said take all everything. It said take all the landscape. Take all the, take, all the, take out the shrubbery, the take out the grass. take out the trees, take out the brick, and put in the grass. That's what you. That's what's in the letter. Well, no, in the letter I wish to propose options for the five foot landscape there. This letter. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. And I wish to propose options. And then the options proposing is the right. official code.
Well, why don't we go out and look to so see what the pyramid been, looks like? Marty, we've been out there half a dozen times. I, I don't think another sidewalk is necessary here, but that's my opinion. I threw out my opinion. You want to see what the pyramid looks like because he's never had pyramid there before. That was part of one of the original rebuttals that he did want to do, and he he did put curb in it, because in the past it was all open, drive in and drive out all the time. Easy to plow. And like I said yeah. beforehand, turn out with all the with that curbing there, it has stopped some of the waterfall, which it would use to run all the way the time in no, now it's parking lot. Now it runs in the streets. Yeah. Yeah, it stays out of there. So I agree with Roger. I don't know if a site walk is necessary, but what even if it was more of a of a sketch plan of what you guys were hoping to do, I I think would be helpful. No one. Like I said before, I think there could be a lot of other alternative ways to handle that that may not have the expense of the brick or even the potential maintenance of the brick that I would be inclined to look into aside from the artificial turf. I don't know. Artificial turf is expensive enough. I, I imagine that somebody who makes this makes a lot of money off of it. I personally though I think there could be some some a better alternative out there than than a strip of artificial grass. Oh. To me, I mean and and again, I'm not I am would be more inclined, I'd be happier to see a a stone in between. You know, maybe with some small, low-level shrubs coming up through. The bulb style that would would die back and come back up. That would provide a little a little more aesthetic value than than grass. just grass. Just well, no, fake grass. Let's. I I I, I agree. I think the grass looks kind of cheap. It, it, it might look good when you first put it down, but after a while it just it starts. That's real grass you're talking about. This stuff stays like that all the time. 
I tell you, whenever I see that, that, that you go to NYA, you've had it in ten years. Any of the, yeah. any of the big schools there was the school rich schools had that instead of really bad. That's what they wanted to try to do RSU. Put football up there. Put the artificial turf in. You, Jamie, we need a better proposal. Just any artificial traffic to not turn in the The problem is that we're watering down the requirement that we don't have no, authority to we're wait. We're not watering down, we're improving them. No, the requirement, well, the requirement that's in the standards is requiring 15 foot vegetated buffer. Oh, well, that, well, we're down to where it's, we're down down to where it's eight feet and there's nothing vegetated. It's plastic. So it's so how do we how how do we how do we you want to do it. That? That's fine. You can, you can find all kinds of reasons why you want to do nothing. I propose that there's, there's one reason why we have to do something because it's required. It, it's in it's in standard. It's one of our ordinances. It, it's that's the one reason. We're well, looking for a well, compromise, and we have something that's not bad. And if maybe you want to change it, but but to go down to a, a strip of plastic, that's not a vegetated buffer. That's what it would be. The strip again. Why not just paint it a color? It's it's same effect to me. Driving by. You just see at 50 miles an hour, you probably wouldn't have. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't matter if it's brick or daylight, at least 50 miles an hour, you doesn't matter. Tom, we suggested that a long time ago, painting green. That was now we've got a motion on the floor, and there's a second. All those in favor? Most, I'm sorry, what's the motion, motion to accept the proposal? to approve the, proposal the amendment to, to allow Mr. Medodi's artificial part. Okay. Do you have any favor to move opposed? Yeah. Did they ask who was opposed? Is anybody opposed? I don't know if anybody's abstaining. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to think of something else. So, so opposed. Um, get a count. <clears throat> um, so the motion fails. Motion fails. Can we table this till we get a no, you have a motion. You you voted. Voted. So the astro turf is in there. You can go. You can open up or do another. Yeah, right. Jamie's another request discussion request. or right. the applicant may want to propose something. Else. Yeah, right. So they can mull it over, and if they want to do something else, it's on to the board. Don't worry about it. I know I'm back. <laughs> No one can um, think that I was the original plan board member. I don't know. So you're the one that made that, that ordinance? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your all of your stuff has been advertised. Maps been done. 
It's been advertised in the paper. All the notifications have gone out to every single one of the property owners with all of the identified districts, uh, the strikeouts, and all that stuff has been done. It's ready to go. The word has been written, and you're ready for public hearing on the 22nd. So, um, people are ready to go on that. Uh, in terms of, I, I think that's it. <laughs> Frankly, it's been an exhausting period. Uh, I congratulate the planning board for working very hard and diligently on uh, getting this done in time. Um, and uh, we're ready to go to public hearing and see what happens at that particular time. I've gotten input from a number of people so far and uh, a lot of questions. By the way, uh, if you're looking for it, all of the uh, uh, all of the items have been uh, posted on the town website. Uh, both the comp plan and all of your amendments are on the town website for the public to, to read at any time. It's also been mailed out to or emailed out to our distribution list as well. So um, we've got it out in here as much as possible. I'm going to be talking to the papers, see if we can get an article written on it so we can make sure that that's another venue in which we can notify people that the public um, so everybody is aware of uh, what's coming um, and can make comment at, at the meeting. Uh, otherwise, um, I have not really much more to report. We have um, a couple of enforcement issues that may be coming up. I don't think they would be coming to the planning board at this particular time. I would keep you aware of what's going on with them. Can, can I ask about your communication and the ex parte communications that have been going on yeah. between the board and the public. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, that, that was a. I we had an enforcement action I got dragged into, and then uh, in which the, uh, the the person that was one of the people who works for the person who was involved in this was saying that they had been talking to planning board members and. Um, I just want to remind you, I, I fired off that email to you to remind you really quickly that that's something we have to always avoid is ex parte communication. Cannot talk to the general public about anything that's pending or any, uh, any kind of thing regarding any application. For the very simple reason that unlike the board selectmen or any of the other committees, you guys are a board, you're a judicial board. You do actions, you make judgments on the applications. And the problem with ex parte communication is that compromises your objectivity. It puts you in a position where somebody, could, somebody from a, another perspective could accuse you of, of, being, um, of being biased and require you to recuse yourself. Or, after the fact, appeal a planning board decision or a planning board action based on the fact that the, uh, several people have compromised and they have uh, been communicating with applicants outside of the context of a uh, planning board meeting. Planning board can only discuss planning board matters in this context, here, in this meeting. In order that's already public record. Yeah. Anything that's public record. But anything that might be coming up or anything that is, is uh, occurring um, or is being considered, please do not speak to the public, do not speak to the applicant. If the applicant ever approaches you, just say, look, I only talk about this within the context of a planning board meeting. Um, if you have an issue or a question, ask the planner. I know you do Yeah, and, and he, will, he will communicate through, through the board. But if any one of you starts talking to individual applicants or representative of applicants, it puts you in a, in, a, in a position of jeopardy, puts the town in a position of jeopardy as well. Where, as I said, somebody could appeal a decision based on an, an accusation, whether it is justified or not, of uh, bias uh, in, in your decision making process because you've talked about it. So, just a reminder that we need to really watch that. ZBA and Planning Board are the only ones in that real position. So. Be very, very careful. And I, I mentioned that you know uh, we used to have the town attorneys come and, and give a, an annual refresher course to all of the boards that are in these positions, basically ZBA and, and planning board. And I think they also would do it with selectmen on, on a variety of different issues. And we should 
get together and, and they, they would just remind you of one or two, some of the limitations you had. As one or two years sure. ago where we had people who joined with the selectmen and the planning board right. together, yeah. they came in three years ago. Two, two, two years, years ago. ago. Two years. We, we talked to Paul about it and what we're trying to do it again. Good. I'm sure I yeah. Question. Yeah. Did we get the update from board uh, from the project on Route 1 about the wetland or whatever else that so that he can turn us start his uh, construction of yes. the grid. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't think of that the applicant. Thanks for reminding me because that, that is something I wanted to bring up to you. I didn't send it to you because I just got it and I figured you didn't want any more paper. Yet. That so point. Yeah, that? Jimmy Logan uh, from Alfred uh, came in, sat down, went over it with me and then went out and uh, Reestablish the, um, the wetlands line on the Lord Boys project and stated that, yeah. We uh, verified. It yeah. verified. It's, those lines were built. Yeah. And, uh, and they actually, in some places, so they go take us and rerouted the line, and they were a little concerned that, that the, the line actually would go closer, closer away, from the away, from the line, away from the building. So, uh, Jimmy, you know, basically, you sent me a letter, and I can send it to you all. I'll send yeah, it all. Okay. It's okay. It's all okay. No more paper, right? It's it's confirmed. So they're so they're ready start. to proceed. Yeah, he's got. He, he his only thing is he's going to get his um he's going to get his uh um his performance stuff in, in order. And that's it. He's ready to go. Yeah. So that's sort of construction. Yeah, just a, a question for Ted. If, if the board chooses to make a change for the Fritz property, did I give you enough time? Yeah. No. As, I know that was that was going to be one of my comment questions also. This is the you know the, the eleventh hour. The pumpkin is just about ready to leave. Well, what was there? I was there. Ideally, you know, we we have these public hearings prior to with enough time to make changes, but that didn't happen. So. Um, I, I'm not so sure because I talked to his son-in-law today, and uh, about his property, and um, I don't think there've been any changes since we didn't change. I'm pretty sure I, I can't say that with certainty. I want to sit down with with Dick and, and go on this, but I don't think his property has changed fundamentally in this round we're going to. It's going from CCS to um, to DB1. And DB2. And, and if he's allowed to have a junkyard today or a junkyard permit, it shouldn't change that. He should yeah, well, well, I don't well, think he would that. I don't well, see the thing is, I, I think he's always been he's been in the CCS since 2007. Right, but he was had probably had grandfathered right. back then because he had. And he would be now. And he, he still would be. He may not understand that. I don't no, know. No, I, I, Marty's shaking his head. I, I agree. I think, I think he's, his expired. license expired. Oh. He doesn't have a standing license, I don't think, right now. Oh, I, I have don't you know had, that. Have you given him one recently? I don't remember him getting a junkyard license. No, he may know. have it. He may have it, but he's not using it. Okay. But it's got to be renewed by the select. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah, saying yeah, it because... He lets it lapse. If he may not have let it lapse. The one open. thing I would ask, if possible, let's try to find the meeting if we can and what was in the man, there's a big difference about open. I know. He doesn't have a date. Yeah, how are you going to find that one? That was back when I was on the board. I mean, discussion, I mean, that is, long discussion is discussion agreement. Almost three years. It goes to that there was a but vote there was or discussion, something. Discussion, right. And I remember discussion. Action. I don't remember. I don't remember a vote on anything. Know. Yeah. No, there, there was no, I don't recall any, any vote. I think there was just a discussion about it. Because I clearly remember him talking about junkyard permits and his tires and that's why he has that junkyard permit. Yeah, because I was of the, I remember the discussion because yeah. I was of the opinion that all of that other stuff ought to be just accessory use. I got blown out of the water on that. I said, hey, then holy cow, if you sell tires, you gotta sell rims. If you sell rims, no. you gotta sell some deer. But no, they came in different classifications. I mean I remember the discussion yeah. and that's why I'm that's why I'm saying this. I, I think it's key to understand what exactly well, what he wants. You were on the board, th th yeah. I, well, don't worry. I'll sit down and talk to him because I, I, I want to I get to the bottom of it. Um, but you were on the board three years ago, right? Well, yeah. So if June we go back, will start three years. I've been so. So, so we can go back. That'll be a start date for 
us. And two years when you were on. Yeah. And that gives me a start date to start looking or and a start date. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best. Thank you. I'm not sure there'll be much detail. Yeah. And we didn't And we don't do it. verbatim minutes. Right. And that's the thing yeah, you have to remember. So if it was just a discussion that was had, it might mean somebody no, having to minutes. review videos or listen to yeah. audios. Yeah. We didn't have and videos then. Yes, we did. We always have audio recorded the message. I have cassette tapes in the town videos. hall when we videos. had the audio yeah, the Audio. We're not going we to. We didn't do video, no. but we audio. That's what I was referring to video. So my point is that I just can't start a date. Something to go by, and, I, and, uh, and, and maybe in discussion with him because I wasn't yeah, I, yeah. because I wasn't clear if this was those kind of discussions three years ago or when we started this process with with the B one and B two because he no. said that no, he was no, it wasn't this process. It was, it was that four. So you guys D B one D B two. You guys started that after he left. after I left the yeah. board. Yeah. So it was before that and. You know, I don't know if it was a... No, but I'm saying by his years. comments that it was agreed that he wouldn't be in these zones, that would, I mean, that's no. kind of what I got. So uh, I, I just really asked right. him yeah. exactly yeah. what maybe we can tie in a day. Because his son-in-law was in here not too long ago talking yeah. about the property, his property, and Dick's property, yeah. and, you well, know... Well, Dick was in also Florida. Was, he was originally in the, in the uh, R1, Got put into the B one. Well, no, the the son-in-law, because the son-in-law has a, a residence out there, but he's in the B I. Yeah. And yeah, so I mean, I and think you said that we try to understand what we want to understand, what, yeah, and make yeah. sure that we don't this is know, doesn't get screwed over. So. I, you know, what I in, in talking to a son-in-law, what I what I gleaned from it was that. I think back in 2007, there was discussions about moving those lines. The R1 line, the DB1, or the uh, VI line, and the CCS line. But it didn't happen. Because we went over that actually today, uh, using the zoning map, and he said, well, this is recent. I said, no, this is needed. It's 2007. This is a 2007 map. And he said, well, prior to this map, that's what was supposed to happen. So, it might have a long history back there that, that maybe promises were made that weren't done. I don't know. Yeah, I but I told him, as far as the son-in-law was concerned, I've already talked to him and said, um, in your situation, if you want, if you would, you want to make advocate that you be placed. He's on the board of the BI in, in R1. You want to advocate going to B into R1 because you've got a residence there. You want to you know cut it up for residential for your kids at some later date. I certainly can make that pitch to the planning board because they haven't gotten into the residential boundaries yet, which is what you'll be doing once the comp plan committee re okay. reconvenes after town meeting. And that's what they're going to do. I've already talked to Donna. They're going to reconvene um, after the town meeting and then they're going to start working on the, resi the, the residential districts. So the majority of the rest of the town get that comp plan thing done so we can proceed on finishing this ordinance up and get the new ordinance into its new format and get it done. And, and, and can you make sure on your, yeah, on your notes one. too that you do capture getting that uh, the, the fire suppression and hydrants in proximity onto the new applications? Right, because that's a great idea. It is. And it I is. hate to lose that. Well, Marty yeah. keeps bringing it up and it should and just, it should just be right. a, an item on the application. Just to, just to bring it to the forefront. I think it's I think yeah. it's, it's I think a great it's and I don't want to lose it. Yeah. And I don't even think that's some that's something that it's a, an administrative change to an application. Yeah, so that, that's what you guys can do. We can just no. add it to the application. Yes. Yeah. Say like locate the nearest distance. Well, I, distance. Right. I remember point blank when I built my building, I had to prove and show how far I was away from the fire hydrant. And, and that was in 02. Well, I think it's a great thing to put on the, uh, the application and make it a standardized question. Um, I think also, I, I couldn't find it in there because it's buried somewhere in that zone, but we still have that issue of, con uh, of what really amounts to um, conflicting sections of the zoning ordinance, or excuse me, the subdivision ordinance that require, require ISO 
uh, sister standards, which is what so Big Terrio had to do over on Old Post Road for right. to drive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's 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 a huge burden. Phil had to deal with it, actually. Remember that? You had to deal with it too, because he's easy to the turn off. So um, it's a that's something that, that you know, if you think you're just dealing with the zoning words, you're not. You have to deal with that. And I've talked to the chief about really attacking this fire ordinance. Because when Richard started started that fire ordinance, he, he said he submitted it to the selectmen. So he submitted it to the selectmen and they and basically they kicked it over the new fire chief, I believe. That's what you were doing here. And he hasn't had time to get it. You're gonna to have to start. When you submit to the a while ago, six, eight months ago, yeah. a year ago. A year ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I recall seeing that. They came to us and we said that the fire chief would make the determination on fire suppression. That before you and even, you were going to gonna do it after you hired the fire chief. You hadn't even hired the fire chief at the time. So maybe you never got it. Okay, any other things, Mr. Right. Plano? No, I think I think uh, you guys deserve a well. You're going to get a well deserved rest. You get two more sides and get back. Motion to adjourn. Not yet. Oh. Uh, any comments from the people up front? Mr. Levy, any comments? Yep. The only comment I have tonight is uh, I think uh, we have noticed how grass strip is a landscape item. Grass is a landscape item. In your ordinance says shrubs, trees, or other landscape products. Yeah, they're material. Grass is a landscape product. I think you guys have the latitude to let them do it. Okay, you got any comments? No. Okay. Okay. Comments? Motion to adjourn. Second? In favor? Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.